Hello everyone and welcome to Medhedosnet podcast episode 17 live on YouTube and Facebook. I'm your host Vika Slanyan and as always I'm joined by my amazing partner in crime Mike Balian uh, where we discuss great Armenian uh, history covering different people, eras and topics. It's Thursday, December 9th. Happy Thursday to everyone. Uh, one day closer to the weekend. Um, we have the honor to be in this beautiful studio and we're joined by our special guest, Harach Kozi Bayokian, sorry, Kozi Bayokian, uh, where we will be discussing our main topic, um, history of Armenian rugs. Uh, how are you gentlemen today? Very good. Just looking forward to this. Yeah. Beautiful segment. I'm ready. Yeah. Thank, <laughs> thank you so much for having us um, in your studio. I know we talked about this. Uh, you know, we were, you were going to join us in our studio, yes. but we were like, this is going to oh, be... This is better. Yeah, this is yes. much better. <laughs> this is a lot better. Um, those of you uh, who don't know Harach, um, if you don't mind giving us, our audience, a little bit about uh, yourself, a background, you know... Um, where you're from, how you got involved into rugs, yeah. just a small bio. Okay, well, I was uh, I was born in uh, Aleppo, Syria. Uh, and at age one, my family migrates to Lebanon. Uh, so I grew up in Lebanon. Then 1970s, mid 1970s, when the civil war started, I had to leave traveled for about a year, year and a half in uh, Europe, then joined my father in Chicago, who was already there about a year before me, and working for a carpet company, mm -hmm. an Armenian carpet uh, dealer, a very well uh, reputable dealer. So I joined him. I, uh, I was hired immediately by him. Then... I worked also to another company. Uh, it was called Biloyan Isberian Brothers. And uh, for about a year, year and a half, a winter comes. And for too, a guy too cold. like me, too cold, man, <laughs> I was grown up in the Mediterranean climate. I said, no, this is not a place for me. And uh, we were on a vacation. Uh, met some old friends in New Jersey while I was traveling and eventually, eventually moved to Southern California. So I've been in California since 1970, late 77, 78. Wow, before and, I was uh, born. <laughs> same. And uh, I wanted to... Uh, course be in the carpet business and uh, I went to the uh, design district West Hollywood at that time believe it or not most of the dealers were Armenians yeah I noticed one sign it says Minasian rugs and S Minasian I, I went in I said uh, I'm a repairman I can repair carpets do you have any opening can you mm -hmm. use a repairman I said well uh, what can you do I said Try me. I said, how much you want? What's your rate? Said, Raj, if you don't mind, into the mic. So oh, can, okay. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I said, uh, listen, don't worry about it. Whatever you think I'm worth it, just pay me. I'm not going to go around. And Anyway, to make the long story short, he tested me for one week. He was very impressed. He said, you're overqualified. I said, listen, <laughs> don't worry. And I worked for him for a uh, few years. Then I went to a private business. Uh, that didn't last too long. I was short in funds and then worked again. And on and off, it's been, I've been in the carpet business. So eventually, uh, in the uh, late 1980s, I met my Beautiful wife, Mira. Who's, who's sitting in, who's the, sitting in background, the background, by the way. <laughs> uh, Mira, you want to come in the camera? She's, she's the producer for the show. Yeah, today. yeah. She, you, want, you want to come in the camera? She's, she's the one pouring the wine and the, Hi, and the cognac. Hi. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Welcome, Cheers. guys. Thank you. Uh, Cheers. I don't want to take much of your... Uh, so, so we started our own business. We started our own business in repairs. I built a studio in North Hollywood. 
uh, early 1990s, when Armenia became independent, we had this flux of Armenians traveling, coming, in, yeah. immigrating to Southern California. I said, listen, these women must be good in repairing drugs. So eventually the uh, workforce grew to about 18, 20 women. Wow. They didn't know really how to repair. I said, listen, I'll teach you. I'll teach you and you can earn some money and you learn the trade. Yeah. So we worked there for a while, a few years until 1995 was the earthquake. Yeah, 1995. Earthquake were <laughs> damaged our home. So we moved again to another place and we were lucky enough to have an opening space in West Hollywood on Merrows. We opened the gallery. We operated from there another five years or so. Then in the year 2000, by now I've been collecting and I've been into Armenian rugs. We'll get into that. Yeah. Uh, I said, listen, the business, the workshop, in Van Nuys, 20 girls, women working in the showroom between me and my wife, commuting back and forth, back and forth, too much. We did some calculations. We said, we're closing everything. We're going to buy a property. We're going to build our home the way we want. We want to build our studio, our workshop. We're going to concentrate on what we're doing on the study of Armenian carpets, Armenian textiles, and let's see where it takes us. We are lucky enough that many of our prominent uh, designers that worked with us, they followed us. They said, doesn't matter where you are, we want to work with you. So we didn't lose too much business. Yeah. By working from here, it gave us more time to focus on the studies that we had to make. So for the past 21 years, we've been here. Wow. And working, studying from this location. Yeah. Three acres land, not too close neighbors, workshop outside, studio here, the home is here. Yeah. So... It's a dream. It's, it's, it's I mean, your, you guys, it's your own little paradise. You guys got to oh. see the view that we we see from here. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, it's nice. um, and and obviously, everybody, you know, you guys can see all these rugs. They're ancient rugs. Uh, as we mentioned, um, actually, we didn't mention. We was on the live Instagram. Yeah. This rug on the table. Oh yeah. Is 180 years old, and he gave us the okay to have the glasses <laughs> on the uh, <laughs> on the table. But I'm still nervous. Just be careful. Yeah. With the um, but again, thank you so much for doing this. Uh, it, it's amazing. It's the first time we're outside of the studio um, and doing live. Yeah. So uh, we prepared some questions for you for the topics we're going to cover. By the way, everybody, just uh, to let you know, this is going to be a three-part series. So today we're going to be <laughs> really there's, grabbing. There's something oh. <laughs> floating around. It's like, are oh. we high-fiving? No, no. Okay. Sure, we can uh, if you okay. want to. Okay, <laughs> sure. There we go. Oh. All right. Um, so the um, this is uh, going to be a uh, three part show, I guess you can call. So today we're going to go back to you know ancient history and and cover uh, you know uh, the past, and then uh, Haraj Haraj uh, talking to him. He's a almost like a historian. The knowledge that he has, well, he is, is absolutely. I mean, it's it's beyond that. The the information he has is yeah unbelievable. Yeah. So there's a lot of questions that we're going to be asking him, that kind of dig back to things and tie things into a lot of the cultural aspects of, and then leading into rug making. Yeah. You know? So so today's show is going to be again mostly the historical ancient history, and then uh, we'll announce the second show later on, which will cover mostly, I believe, we said from. 18th and 19th century somewhere right? uh, you know the way i yeah. divide it is uh, the first episode we'll do general we yeah. touch bases mm -hmm. from the beginning of time until recent times yeah. and then since uh, historic armenia was big it was yeah. huge and we had um, different 
parts of Armenia, they had the subculture. Armenia, different Armenian provinces. Culture, different yeah. provinces. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, and then we're going to separate. We will see how Western Armenia got its own culture kind of forked. Yeah. And then Eastern and Western. So yeah. we're going to do the second one, we'll do Western Armenia. Yeah. And the third segment, we do Eastern Armenia. Yeah. yeah. So that yeah. way we'll cover everything. Yeah. 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 Well, we don't want to give too much away today. So, uh, but again, thank you everybody who's joining us live, both on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, this is the MedHeadosNet podcast. Uh, subscribe. If you're on YouTube, subscribe. Uh, hit that bell notification. Uh, so every time we go live, you guys you will get notified. Also, we post all our audio spectrum podcast on YouTube as well, so you can listen to it. Um, and on Facebook, thank you everybody who's joining us on Facebook. You guys have questions uh, on the live chat. Go ahead and uh, ask your question during the show. We'll post your question actually on the screen. You'll see it and Harach will answer whatever question you have. So Harach, we've prepared some questions for you and we're going to start talking, kind of diving into the yeah. topics. Okay. So Mike, you want to take it away? Yeah. Yeah. So um, what I wanted to ask you is, um, you know, you have a vast having spoken to you in the past, you have a vast knowledge of, I mean, all Armenian history from the beginning of time. And we know that our people have occupied the lands that we know as the Armenian highlands, which was more or less north of what we know as Mesopotamia, or almost in that area where the Tigris and the Euphrates began, right? They, we, were, we were known for cultivating and domesticating animals. What can you tell us with your knowledge? What, how much more can you elaborate on that? Well, uh, first of all, let me thank you guys. This is an <laughs> excellent forum because I've done so many different lectures, shows, and things like that, uh, public speaking, about the same subject, more or less. But this gives me much more freedom <laughs> and be spontaneous and answer Let questions and there's no yeah. time limit. There, know, there's, no there's no script. Flow. There's, there's no, no yeah, script. There's yeah. no script. Yeah. Uh, and they don't tell me like you have 30 eight minutes exactly and then we have 10 minutes that's john we can be here all night if you like we don't care we love, as long as love as long as this is flowing we're good yeah that's good <laughs> well thanks to mira anyway thank you guys and making uh, this is your first one doing outside of live the yeah outside of the yeah. studio yeah i'm honored I'm we're honored we're honored, we're honored. Are here we're honored and you make all this knowledge public after yeah. all if somebody writes a book nobody reads it what's good is that book so Absolutely. all the work i'm doing we're yeah. doing if it's not accessible Doc to public what's good it yeah, is it needs to be documented so everything thanks to you that's you're making it public and reach to reach to the audience anyway yeah. all right um the question was um how it started between the Armenian highlands and yeah. all that. Well, we know for sure, we know it's recorded that the, after the last uh, ice age, um, the first area that this globe started warming was uh, what is known generally as Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia uh, means in Greek language between two rivers. Armenians call it uh, uh, Michaketk, which is a compound word between two rivers. Between basically. two rivers, yeah. So at that time, I don't think there was any boundaries, countries, right? No. Yeah. Maps, right? Yeah. And that area was designated, was named between two rivers by its geographic location. And where did these two rivers um, really start flowing? Now, Mike, if you, uh, please, if you can go to the, uh, uh, the map, the third one, which is the globe, and it shows basically where that uh, on this map, it says Turkey, of course, 
But if you go to uh, the second one, you see that highlighted map in between. This is where Mesopotamia was designated. More That's between two rivers. And all the way up on the very top of that shoe, horseshoe, let's say, okay? The horseshoe on the top, the north part, is where Armenian highland is. I think we have a zoomed period. version of this, right? There's yeah, a, if uh, maybe the second yeah, there one. We are, yeah, there, there you go. go. Okay. Yeah. So uh, that's what basically Armenian highland was. The areas was named by its geographical mm -hmm. area. Boundaries and maps came later. And where those two rivers started flowing and every place between those two rivers became fertile. Hence that area was called Fertile Crescent. Fertile Crescent, yeah. That's where the begin the, our civilization's first life started beginning there. Plants, uh, insects, birds, uh, everything. The life yeah. started there. So... The second one is Indus Valley, which is about 2,000 to 2,500 uh, years later. So this is the earliest civilization that we know. And at one time, the, we were like any other people, hunters and gatherers, yeah. until we started domesticating those animals. Once we domesticated about 11,000 years ago, the first domestication was uh, goats and sheep. Mm -hmm. Just to show some people on the screen um, who are joining us live on YouTube and Facebook, this is the area yeah, we're talking about. Yeah, that's the area we're talking yeah. about, and that's the Fertile Crescent. And as you see, the first animals that were domesticated in our civilization was uh, the lamb, the sheep, and goat. Yeah. Um, and it's uh, no wonder that the first domesticated animal, the sheep, um, is called Ovis gmelini, gmelini armeniaca. That's the that's, name says it's, it all. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's right so there. <laughs> once those animals were domesticated and we started having the agrarian society where people didn't have to move, migrate with the animals, they became settlements. Yeah. They settled there, they started having their own herds, they didn't have to move. From there on, if we go back to the second uh, uh, clip where uh, Ambassador Michael Furler Fur uh, states that whoever bakes or eats bread, makes or drinks wine, uses metal or jewelry, or wears clothing and shoes, is tied by invisible bonds of cultural inheritance to Armenia. This is... Uh, th this is... Well said. It's right to the point. Yep. Now, from there on, if we look for the past 30 years since the independence of Armenia, the archaeological findings that we're having, mm -hmm. the 10 most ancient things were found in Armenian highland. Let's, uh, I'm going to call it Armenian highlands, uh, because recently, I mean, you, you talk about uh, Bordasar, which is, mm -hmm. Turks call it Göbekli Tepe, yeah. which is the translation. I call it Armenian Highlands. Uh, we later designated the lower part, the Silesian area, as Poker Hike, mm -hmm. Mez Hike and Poker Hike. So all that I would call Armenian Highlands. Now, at that time, it might have not been called Armenian Highlands because at different times, the designation of Armenian people, the names were different. Yeah. Um, it, the same people were, call, were called Urardians, mm -hmm. uh, Hittite, 
of course, by different cultures, different uh, people, they gave us different names. Now, they call the Urartian civilization. What happened? Just they disappeared in thin air? No. 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 It, we're the same lineage. We're the same lineage. Now, for example, um, I'm going to ask you a question. Uh, do you know what means Somhuri? Somhuri, no. no. Do you know what means Somhuri? Wait, no, I do not. That sounds like anything we know. No. Okay. No. Georgians call Armenians Somhuri. Really? Why is that? Is there a translation to this? That's Armenian. The In word is Armenian. language. No, the word is Georgian for Armenian. Somhuri. No. Somhuri. 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 Somhuri is okay. Armenian. Okay. Wow. Now, we don't call ourselves Somhuri. We call no, it Hayeng, Hay. Mm -hmm. But any other people call us Hay? No. no. They call us Armenian. Has nothing to do, maybe. We are Armenians. Yeah. We are Hay. We are also Somhuri. So interesting. Yeah. Wow. You see, I had no those idea. names were designated, but the people were the same. There were no boundaries. Yeah, there was. I mean, when you yeah. think about any of the stuff that we've talked about, right? How well, many, you know, yeah, everything we've I, covered I mean, in the past. Maps, maps had separation points, or of borders, course. or whatever yeah. the case. Well, but you, you, we generally referred to them as the people of this, the people of that, the people of this. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So those names that were used by other cultures uh -huh. somehow stuck, and then in the history. For some reason, they separated us from them, but we're the same people. Anyway, going back, going back, wow. for example, they say um, Urartian art. It, to me, is Armenian art. Of course it is. The Georgian would yeah. call it Somhuri art. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, you know, when we talk about this in, in the past episodes that we've done, you know, we, we cover so many different eras and kingdoms and dynasties. Uh, you know, you might be talking about Urartu or whatever, you know, like la, 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 the last episode we did the Oriented dynasty, you know, uh, at the end of the day, it's all Armenian. Yeah. It doesn't matter if they were a little bit up north, a little bit south, yeah, you know, it was were, all, all Armenian, Armenian highlands. That's and, where it was covered. As he, again, as, as he mentioned go. earlier, as he mentioned earlier, and we've talked about it in past episodes, they were provinces, they were pockets of people that were generally of the same descent. Let's, let's call yeah. it that. You yeah. Know? yeah. Yeah. Now going back to the settlement. Okay. Everything is abundant. Just imagine you had so much herd domesticated animals and people, uh, there is a, a population growth. Eventually they had to move. They had to find new postures for their animals. Yeah. Right. So they had to travel and that's how it spread from there. The metallurgy, the weaving tradition, all that in at one time, um, I think, Egyptians, they had a different name for Armenians at that time. Wait, they we called yeah, we, I was just about to ask you the same thing. We, Why am I, I blanking on this? I forgot. <laughs> yeah. I forgot. There's they, so, they there's so many us, terms. There's so many terms from right. so many different cultures, uh, you know, during a time. The Sumerians called us something different. The Assyrians called us something different. The Hittites called us something different. Yeah. It was Egyptian called us the river people. You know Why? We use those rivers to travel down and, and believe it or not, at the time we had merchants. They would weave from reeds huge baskets. I mean, bigger than this room, huge wow. baskets. They cover it with animal hide. They use it as a raft. They put their mules in them. <laughs> they put their uh, wines and everything that they make, cheese, who knows what else, pottery maybe, and travel down the river all the way to uh, down south, sell everything, 
then take those hides out, put them on the mule, and travel all the way back, back to wow. Armenian highland. Wow. This was recorded That's amazing. about uh, 300 BC by Arab uh, historian Ibn Khaldun. It's, it, this is recorded, not by us. Yeah. Unfortunately, we don't have, our history doesn't wow. go. <laughs> Yeah, and then we've oh, yeah. discussed that remnants, before. Yeah, yeah. And it's yeah. unfortunate. Anyway, yeah, that we. Anyway, so if that's the first civilization, okay, if somebody wants to do a more research, please be my guest. Go and do your research. You'll see where the first civilization uh, yeah. started. It's again. Uh, if we go to older maps, you uh, you love maps. I love maps. In many places. For the Armenian highland or Armenia is referred also as Eden. Yes, yes, it is. Yes, it is. We've covered right? this too, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Is Eden. Mm -hmm. Eden is theoretically where this civilization started. The and, first uh, time. Was, wasn't it referred to Eden in a in a in the uh, Gilgamesh? Was it not? No, or in 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 the Epic of Gilgamesh, it wasn't. Uh, it was referred or it was refer to, referenced to it, I believe. For Ararat Mountain, but there was a different name. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, now we, of course, we don't have any uh, tangible evidence of carpet weaving from that time because uh, organic material yeah. deteriorates and all that. But we did have um, pottery that has in the outside of it, the basket pattern. So we know from Ibn Khaldun's uh, writings that Armenian people wove baskets they even build a raft from it. Mm -hmm. They used reeds and flexible uh, plant material to do weaving. They also used baskets as a, a form to do clay pots. Really? The clay, they form it in a, in a round basket. They just put the clay in there. They put it in a fire the basket will burn, the clay becomes hard. Hard, yeah. You have a dish. Yeah. You have a pot. And you probably still have the patterns of the basket. Exactly. On the exterior, wow. yeah. So we do Design have, tec technique. Well, it wasn't meant for design. Designs came later. That was but must accidental have been, yeah, design. Yeah, it, was, it was a happy accident. Yeah, happy yeah, accident. Happy accident. Yeah, probably, probably. Yeah. So um, we do have very old fragments that found in Arini cave that was uh, discovered recently, mm -hmm. about 6,000 years old, about 4,000 BC, uh, fragments of textile. Yeah. Uh, then if we're going to come to the carpet, uh, the oldest exist existing complete carpet uh, is housed in uh, Hermitage Museum. We'll talk about that. Yeah. But not, let's let's go with sequence. And uh, we see how on the on the on this map we see how civilization was distributed from there, traveled to all over the world. Okay. There we go. Here's the map. That yeah. This here. one. Okay. We'll share it right now. Bear with us, guys. We're live. We're doing this as we're... Yeah. Uh, we have a huge fire. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I know. I'm just trying to make sure it, it can show on the yeah, screen. We're, we're trying to it's cover fine. thousands of years of... Yeah. Uh, anyway, we want to make this... Uh, yeah, that's how... Uh, it there started. we go. There we go. And, right, and it spread all over the world. Now, as of... Uh, the uh, weaving technique, I have a theory that how did the first artisan, let's call him, or her, I would call it her, because mostly women do the weaving. Uh, the first weaving technique was 
copied from a bird's nest, which was a basket, not a fabric. Yeah. Bird's nest. Even during the uh, hunters and gatherers period, I would assume those women have to gather those berries, wild berries, and they they would find those abandoned nests. Have Birds you seen nests. abandoned nests? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Course, yeah. They just look like a basket. Yeah. 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 Depends yeah. of the size of the bird, mm -hmm. yeah. bigger or smaller. So they basically mimicked what they see in the basket. They tried to do the same, same thing. thing and as it's their technique developed, they found out the finer fibers can produce a finer weave. And it continued from weeds. We still have hemp weavings. Yeah, from yeah, hemp yeah, yeah. Or reed, right? Baskets, etc. Yeah. From there, it went to the animal hair because they were, they had those sheep domesticated. Yeah. And the sheep naturally releases it has its own wool if they don't shear it if the sheep is sleeping on its own coat becomes packed yeah. it turns into a felt yeah you're right it does so uh. felt predates the carpet i assume they use those felts to put under their beds or to sleep on because it's a natural the natural yeah. insulation, yeah. right? So that's how it all started. But it takes generations and generations and generations to, to develop. Yeah, that's one generation and that's going to gonna lead me into the next question uh, for you. Uh, and I do want to mention everybody who is uh, joining us live. Again, thank you both on Facebook and YouTube. We do have some questions. We will get to them, guys. Uh, I, you know, we want to go through these questions we prepared for Hadaj, talk about these topics, and then we will get back to your questions. So go ahead and ask them. Uh, you, you know, end of the show, we'll ask your questions to Hadaj to uh, answer them if he doesn't answer them during the show. So, um, Mike question to you is um you know talking about like the art of crafting um uh, of the people in this area starting from you know uh known history as, as far as mesopotamia and armenian highlands um what do we know the his uh, about the history um and i guess let's call it the abilities right uh of the armenian highlanders Now, we did say that Mesopotamia is a descriptive name. Yeah. It's like a general, it's like a general it's statement. It's a general statement yeah. for people that live there. In that area. In that yeah. area. Yeah. So they had to travel. At one time, they had to travel because they needed new postures, new graze, uh, grazing lands. They had to travel. So they had to travel down uh, towards the river. And when they travel, they usually, in the ancient times, they followed the river. If you are lost in the mountains, yeah. if you find a civilization, you follow where the water is taking you. Of course. Um, now, the question was, again, what was the question again? The question is like, you know, basically, what do we know about the history um, of the abilities that they had of the people in the Armenian highlands? Well, as far as, as, go, far as, uh, well, as far as we art only crafting. Can refer, well, we only can refer to the uh, archaeological findings mm -hmm. uh, in ancient Armenia, which today is called Turkey. Yeah. Just, it's it's online. Look at Bordasar. Yeah. Look at the engraving done on those huge stones. Look at the uh, structures. Look at this monumental art the, that yeah, they the have done. The time that was spent yeah. carved. The time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and what it meant. Unfortunately, the only things that survived from that period were those stones and the clay things that would not deteriorate as i said 
we cannot find any uh, organic material that survived. Maybe some hair material, maybe some bones. Small, small fragments. Small fragments. Yeah. Yeah. But we do have ample pottery, uh, some metallurgical, some tools, swords, oldest sword, yeah, for example. There was, there was something that was found recently. I know we've discussed it with Vahan, yeah, Dr. Vahan. Yeah, the oldest right? sword. Yeah, what was it what uh, So was it you dated? see, metallurgy was was uh, yeah. started there. So those are the only things that we can look at and we can assume that one plus one is two. If they could do this, they must have done this. In order to do this, in order to carve those rocks, they had to have the tools. Yeah. Right? Of course. If they have the tools, that means they had to build the tools. In my business, for example, many tools that I use to restore rugs, I have to build it myself. So I have to be part carpenter, I have to be engineer. machinist, yeah. engineer, all that. Yeah. Because what you want to do, there isn't a tool for it. So you have to create it because you're you're seeing what's happening. So, exactly. So for you, it's like, okay, well, there. what do I need to do to come up with this yeah. tool to make this weave or whatever it is that you, you're trying to repair? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, from s archaeologists, they, they find one element. And the way that element, that thing is spread, they come up with theories and and draw a picture what that place looked like that's what history is yeah you take certain pieces of the puzzle clues clues yeah. put together yeah. and then you you come up with this so we do have enough clues to ascertain that the first civilization started there Metallurgy was started in Armenian highlands. Weaving started there. Uh, bread making started there. <laughs> yeah. Wine making and, and all that. Now, if you're going to make wine, yeah, then you're going to need containers. Some of the oldest, yeah. some of the, if not the Pottery. oldest, winery yeah. was found in, in Armenia. Armenia. Yeah. Arini, yeah. And not any. Yeah. So, uh, based on those facts on those tangible evidences we come to conclusions okay now uh, about the the common belief is the general common belief is that the wheel was invented in mesopotamia well again mesopotamia is a designation geographical yeah. designation but the oldest cart if you can put this one on was again uh, found in um, in historic Armenia, in Armenia. And why would, and this is a toy by the way, and this sample is housed in Metropolitan Museum. It's a, it's a toy. It's, it's a toy, this is a toy. So, I mean, hey, it kids, was, kids yeah, so they, the, they built it for the kids. They yeah. built it for the kids. Yeah. So kids that tells us then. that they had the bigger one of the same thing. And this would tell us that, okay, they used a uh, uh, bull drone carts yeah. to travel. Now, again, how old is this? Uh, this is, this goes uh, back to about, uh, this was found in uh, Mezamor, uh, about 4,000 years old. Wow. <laughs> That, that, that is amazing. 4,000 yeah, years that old. That thing's still intact, man. Yeah. yeah. It's not, there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. Like, I would still give that as a gift. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> See, well, I mean, it's still <laughs> intact, man. Gift? No, well, I'd, I'd keep a, it. <laughs> well, not a 4,000 year old version of it, but maybe a replica. I'd, okay. keep, the, I'd keep that. Version. Yeah, maybe you should uh, yeah. 3D craft one. <laughs> Now, the uh, next photo will show us, of course, the uh, everybody knows about the, uh, the oldest shoe, shoe, yeah. the oldest yeah. shoe in Arini. But the next one is a fragment of a cloth. And this one is about 10,000 years old. And this was and found this in was Armenia. Found in Armenia, yeah. 
five years earlier at the dig in Turkey. I'm going to call it Armenia because there was no Turkey back then. Uh, this this fragment was. Uh, I love how you said that there was no Turkey. Yeah, you're right. There was no, no there Turkey was no back Turkey then. It's right. Armenia. Yeah, I, I call it's it always Armenia, Armenia. Armenia because yeah, it was called Armenian. Armenian highland. Yeah, those people were in the east. They weren't even maybe yeah. even concocted back then. Who knows? <laughs> And this piece was braided. Now, braiding, again, another technique. And this is about 10,000 years old. I don't think people, I mean, to grasp the idea when you say 10,000 years old. It's, yeah, it's still difficult so for anyone to. And, yeah, yeah. People don't understand when you say, no. see, see it, it seems like just a number, right? You say 10,000 years old. But if you actually start thinking about it, I mean, our lifetime right now, you know, we're still... You know, it's in like the early, of sand. yeah, it's a sp I mean, oh, go back really how sand. many centuries have gone and this is what they were creating back then. So oh. um, th that's, the, I think that's the point I always at least try to make when we do the podcast and we talk about, you know, BCE or, you know, all these kingdoms and stuff. When we talk about, when we say fourth century BC or sixth century BC, people don't understand how long ago this was. Yeah, It's and that's what we try to emphasize all the time is that this was a long time ago and you need to understand how far Armenian culture has come and what we were doing back then and how we've um, almost contributed to civilization. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Maybe we're um, Spartan. Now, uh, Vic, let me point out something here very significant. It's not worthy. If you look at this picture... Oh, let me bring it back on. That's 10,000 years old. And guess how many years it took for the primitive men to develop the skill to make such a fine weave. Yeah. So uh, if this is 10,000, it takes at least another thousand years prior to that. Yeah. Trial and error trial and error and and refining the technique yeah it, it takes generations to refine yeah. it to this of course level. of course so again that i would say about another two thousand years probably okay the next one the next uh file shows the arani cave that's four yeah, thousand this, this was pretty amazing yeah. photo yeah that's four thousand bc and the list goes on I mean, uh, here is the, uh, this one actually was found in Mezamor. This is older. This is uh, about, uh, no, this one, let me see, yeah. Uh, this had the swastika on it. Uh, can you see the swastika? Yeah, yeah. It, it's, the, if, if I can hold the mouse, okay, if people can see this. Well, there is uh, another close-up uh, probably. Let me see if I can uh, fit better. this zoom to fit. There we go. Yeah. Okay. If you guys can see this. That's uh, another uh, clothing fragment. That means this is not a carpet. This is not a crude weave. Yeah. This is this is fine cloth. To do this kind of cloth, imagine how fine the yarn must be spun. Yeah. You know, it's like taking that animal hair and, and spinning it really fine, long lines. To get the details. So they, could, so they could weave a cloth. Now look at your shirt. Look at each thread. In yeah. order to be this flexible, they have to do the thread so fine. And at that time they used spindle. Yeah. Mostly yeah. was spindle to make the thread. And then... You see color difference here. So they discovered also natural dyes. Well, let's let's also go back to the fact that they were able to create the spindle <laughs> to do Yeah. You know, well again, again the evolution of the craft. Yeah. Right? Exactly. Like that previous the previous slide that we but were looking at. That's I'm my point. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, I'm sure. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, that, that's So again, we go uh, again refer to the tools to make this. Yeah. Okay. So uh, 
there are bits and pieces of those kinds of evidences that gives us enough reasoning to justify what we are stating. Yeah. Now, what you are looking is, everybody knows by now about this rug called Basrik was discovered in Altai Mountains in 1947 by an archaeologist. Uh, this carpet was frozen in a block of ice. And the upper right corner that is deteriorated, that part was left outside of the ice. So the ice preserved most of the it. The ice yeah. preserved for 2,500 years probably. It was frozen in the ice. That's why it was uh, preserved. Uh, in uh, 1982, the first art historian who wrote an article and a book about this carpet was a German uh, art historian, Ulrich Schurman. Uh, according to him, this piece, he stated that it's late Urardian quote, early Armenian. Since then, there was a debate. Turks said it's Turkish, Persians said it's Persian. Of course, of course they did. Azeri said, no, it's Azeri. Ah, of course, <laughs> yeah, Azeri. And, <laughs> and finally, a few years ago, finally, they did a dye analysis beautiful reds, mm -hmm. it has beautiful reds. And the dye analysis um, revealed that uh, it was dyed by a Kochniel, uh, the Armenian, uh, we call it Vortangarmir, the Vortangarmir. Armenian uh, Kochniel insect. Yeah. <laughs> Are you using ice? <laughs> no, I'm not using ice. You didn't like it? No, I ice? loved it, I loved it, I loved it. Okay. I just, uh, well, here comes your ice. <laughs> Mira is uh, helping me here. With the <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I suggested <laughs> try one cube of ice with your Ararat cognac. Anyway, so uh, oh, there you go. <laughs> Thank uh, you. This rug was uh, Cheers, tested. Everyone. Cheers. Carbon tested 25, uh, 500 BC. Yeah. Thank you. Of course, sir. Thank you. My Voske Vazarini. I love this one. I, I got to try that next time. Um, Did you smell it? Yeah. It, I, yeah. Oh. It smells amazing. Aroma. What did you What did you say before the show started? What did you call it? What did you, What did it smell like? Armenia. There you go. Armenia. There you go. There you yeah. go. Armenia. Oh my it God! Smells Armenia. I wish I wish our audiences can smell. Anyway, cheers, cheers, cheers from the <laughs> land of the oldest winery. <laughs> cheers. This is true. This is the beauty about live shows. You know, you drink, you talk. Uh, I, I feel like I'm in my own not, home. You know, not, you. It's not really scripted. Yeah, yeah. Well, besides the questions. Well, I but, mean, look, yeah. they're just reference points. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, know? so, you should have uh, studied. There's <laughs> not enough time in the world. <laughs> no, you guys are pretty well uh, versed. I mean, you know your subject. You come prepared. We'll questions do our best. You ask, yeah. Even before this segment, I mean, when we met and talked in general, you guys were well versed. And I don't know, this is not the only one about Armenian history you did with Kevork Nazarian, two segments. No, oh, it's episode 17, so we got I mean, 16 yeah, on, on the belt. Had, we've had, we've so, had some, we have, uh, we've had a little bit of training. I mean, look, we've said it plenty of times in previous episodes. We weren't historians, we're not scholars we were on this journey together we wanted to learn more and more and more based you're off of what we great. know you're you know? doing great and so i'm sure if the audience really goes back to your old yeah episodes, there's a lot of information oh, guys there's a lot a of lot. information in there in fact in fact i think i think uh, all of them i imagine they're like volumes of books like an encyclopedia, like an encyclopedia yeah. that complete the whole Thing you have uh, Nazarian, uh, Gevork Nazarian, you have uh, Vahan Setian, Setian covering different yeah. areas, different areas, and then this just all becomes just a huge library. Yeah, you continue to expand. It's not just about kings and queens. Exactly. You want to you want to talk about the people. You want to talk about the cultural aspects of things. You want to go back and understand 
what normal people did what normal like what you know. made you come up with this idea well uh <laughs> we talked it's about amazing. it well the interview is now on us <laughs> yeah <laughs> apparently uh we're, we're <laughs> no really i i really want to command you is now interviewing us i'm okay with this it. ask away sir i'm kidding. really how what made you to tap into the armenian history we especially would, parts that were not really covered in you know those conventional it's, history you books. know we it started from the art it started from kings and queens and and famous figures whether it was through um language or writers or songwriters or whatnot but then it turned into anytime we would plan about something in terms of art we'd sit down at his office yeah. and talk for like a couple hours we'd just talk yeah so we're, we're you know unfortunately just, this unfortunately and fortunately this whole thing started because of the war yeah it did um and you know with his design of the tigran sculpture and and you know with just one thing led to another not to dive too deep into it um you know it, it like you said we would sit and talk about history and again we weren't that we knowledgeable we get carried away and it was just more like hey you know i told him why don't we do a podcast he had he thought i was joking well that was your that's your fault yeah. i'm blaming you so for the whole and thing. and the part of me why why i wanted to do this was because you know I, I listen to a lot of podcasts uh i drive a lot in what i do so i'm always listening to podcasts and there's so many little armenian related podcasts out there and none of them really talk about history yeah. Yeah. and i always believe that um if, if you are versed in your own history you will you will be a better person. You will understand Absolutely. who you are, where you come from. You will respect your culture. And I think you will respect other cultures. Absolutely. So, so Absolutely. that's where this whole thing came. Yeah. And we gave it a shot. And so far, it's doing I, good. I really commend you guys. Thank You're you. You're doing Thank great you. work. Thank you. All right. Coming yeah. back <laughs> to Basra Grag. Yeah, let's, let's go back now, to the carpet. Uh, this Basra Grag, since uh, 1947, was housed in, uh, as I said, in hermitage museum and it's accessible anybody can go and see it but now aside from the uh, dye also the weave technique of this carpet is uh, uniquely armenian later down the line uh, we will discuss the differences between the armenian weave and non-armenian weave what's our differences how i can tell which carpet is Armenian or not. Mm -hmm. We don't just look at the carpet's pattern and say this is Armenian. No, we have to examine the weave technique, all that. We'll, we'll yeah. cover yeah, that I, later. Yeah, but if you yeah. go to the next, I want to point out something else here. Now in this uh, detailed photo of one corner, if you can enlarge it, if, if you uh, place the second. This no, one? No, oh, this the one. Oh, the one PVS, okay. Sorry, I skipped. Oh, this there we one. go. Yeah. No. Now try to bring one corner and enlarge that. Uh, let me see. Enlarge I, think I have to can you? zoom to yeah. find out. Can you zoom it? Yeah, let me see yeah, if I can zoom it. Can you zoom it to one horseman? Go go down. Right there. Here. There. Okay, let me now, zoom in as much as possible. Sorry, guys, we're good. doing this live. Yeah, that's perfect. I hope everyone that's sees this clearly. Perfect. Okay, perfect. Now, if you look at this detail, Okay, there are several things we're going to be talking about this rug as far as the pattern concerned. Now, you see the red, of course, each uh, computer's screen reflects the color tone differently, but basically, that's what the Armenian cochineal uh, color is that red. And if you look at the detail on the horseman, you see that there is a saddle on the horse and mm -hmm. it's a carpet. Wow! So they they weaved a carpet, a carpet on, on a, a carpet, carpet on a horse on a wow yeah. So that tells us that. Let me, let me sorry. Yeah, go ahead. I want to know how big is this carpet? How big is that area? If we were to kind of for the audience to understand scale. Okay. Yeah. to scale for them to understand the detail of the work that they did of a carpet of of a carpet on a carpet on a horse. Uh, for that time the weave of this carpet is about 220 hand tied knots per square inch <sighs> now uh, what do we mean how the carpet is made is imagine you're looking at the screen and if you enlarge it big enough 
you start seeing pixels. Yeah, it's like the resolution on the screen. The resolution yeah. on the yeah. screen. That's how this. Let's see how close we can woven. get. Wow. That's how these carpets are woven, and they go horizontally, yeah. one line at a time, tying that, 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 that. Imagine drawing a picture on a four by six paper by placing colorful pens only by placing dots. My God. Only by placing dots. And you can also only go horizontal one line at a time to come up with this. Yeah. Can you imagine how sophisticated this is? And this is how old again? 2,500 <gasps> years old. 500 BC. Wow. You hear that, people? How 500 that BC. Survive? Forget the survive. What they were doing 2,500 years ago. Like, no. you, know, you would think it again. would disintegrate at some point, right? Well, you would think it was yeah. it was uh, frozen. Yeah, yeah but we're lucky still, for us. Yeah. yeah. Um, in order for the artisan to come to this sophistication, it has to be at least ten to fifteen previous generations a development of that technique to do this. I'm talking as a weaver. Yeah. Forget everything else. And it's telling us that also they used carpet as a saddle. You see that? With the tassels and everything. And then on the upper gold color, we see that element, which is like a cross. Mm -hmm. And then there is that X. Make sure you keep this pattern in mind. We're going to be talking about this later, okay? This, we still use it today in everything. This is eventually the eight point of the star is also related to this. The Dikran the Grades sun. The sunburst. Sunburst, mm. yeah. again, it's the same thing. Or starburst, now, whatever, it is, whatever it's yeah. considered, yeah. Now, go further up. You see those deer, the elk, or whatever those uh, yeah, let me, animals are? Yeah, let me zoom into this. If you can zoom that, this is the, um, the red deer of Armenian Highland. Until today, we still weave this animal in our rugs. Uh, I just posted one in my uh, Facebook page. Yeah. With, I have several copies of this. Now... Again, look closely. If you examine, if you even enlarge further, the weaver displayed the inner organs of the deer. Yeah, I was wondering. Yeah, what I, that I was. can't See zoom that? in anywhere. This is the furthest yeah, I can go. I was but yeah. wondering what that was. Organs? Yeah. 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 That is amazing. You see how much one carpet can tell us, just a small part of it? You know, it's going to. That's going to lead me into my next question or what, what I wanted to say is, I mean, you look around you, right? Every single one of these pieces, all the symbols, everything that you see on here, I could imagine this means something. 100% this means something. I know I wanted to ask you the last time we talked, but I we didn't have time to, but I'm going to ask you now. So you might as well let me know or let us know what what do some of these symbols mean what what is it actually where did it, where did it come from what 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 significance does it have time periods or or uh hierarchy of people okay you know you know and and to add to that we had a um we had a audience member who asked us what does the rug behind you mean oh i'm sorry did i steal your question <laughs> no no no, <laughs> no we'll, we'll, i was curious we'll cover, too we'll cover maybe yeah. you know yeah uh <laughs> we're gonna cover all that it's, uh, yeah you know but uh, let's let's not jump ahead and come back we'll okay, lose okay. The sequence, okay 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 now i'll answer that sure as soon as we're done with this yeah no we're, problem, we're almost no problem. Done. now this carpet is considered pictorial and actually pictorial and monumental. 
which leads us to the second, uh, the second uh, uh, topic about patterns. Uh, let's not go to those manuscripts yet. Um, you asked about the patterns. Yeah. You know, you had two segments with uh, Bahan Bahan, Setyan, Bahan Setyan, yeah. about alphabet, mm -hmm. about our language. Yeah. The Armenian language. Well, you talked about dialects, how many different dialects. At one time, Armenian language had 275 dialects. Yeah. 275, from which about 80, 85 still is around use. Yeah. But when you say dialect, is it just minor accents here and there, or is it? Like, really, like, they can't understand one another. At some places, they cannot even understand. I mean, I have friends here that were born and raised in Lebanon. They meet an Yerevanian guy, mm -hmm. just got here, and he's speaking. He's lost. He doesn't understand anything. Yeah. Closer to the mic. Totally, <laughs> totally different language for some people. Yeah. But again, there are different levels of for example, for example, in Hajin, they say Aiv Gakko. Aiv, you would assume they don't pronounce the R if you replace the Y with R, it's Ariv. Arev Gakko. Gakko is Guka, yeah. right? But it means it's raining, for example. Now, today's Armenia, in, in, um, in Gyumri, they say Udemke. Yeah. We say yeah. Gudem. Gudem. Yeah. Gudem. They say Udemke. Uh -huh. Siremke. Yeah. Is, comes less. Yes. Yeah. For some people, that's not legible. They don't understand. Yeah, they won't it process is. it properly. No. I don't want to go into the linguistics, but to give you a sample, the communication, language was a communication tool, right? There was more than a language to communicate. There was a time when the women who wove these drugs they didn't have formal education. Mm -hmm. They didn't know how to read mm -hmm. and write. That doesn't mean, didn't mean that they weren't wise. Or, that didn't mean uh, they didn't want to say something. Yeah. Or their life experience that they have learned from their ancestors didn't want to pass it to their children and grandchildren. So they had to come up with symbols. Symbols that were used in many other places. Um, for example, there are many signs that depict stars, sun, uh, the tree of life, um, similar to hieroglyphs. Yeah. Similar to hieroglyphs. And if you follow the chart of the Armenian alphabet, there was a poster by Armin Khanjian who separated different era how the Armenian alphabet was evolved starts from petroglyphs. If you look at the images on petroglyphs, their writings, actually they're similar to hieroglyphs. Mm -hmm. They're telling story in, in pictograms. So in development that to make it into weave technique. Now, you cannot weave anything the way you want. You have to follow strict rule. Yeah. You have either horizontal lines or vertical lines. It's your ingenuity how you can make a curve out of that. Right? Now, in the older days when the weaving was much more crude, they could come up with those geometric forms which had a significant number of curves that meant something. If we study today, 
the majority of the Armenian carpets that are in geometric, they evolve around certain numbers, number two, four, eight, same sequence mm -hmm. as the, uh, the computer, the pixelation yeah. grows, the mm -hmm. memories. Look at your memory card, for yeah, example, it, what how it, it grows. Yeah. Eight, two, four, eight, eight, 16, 32, 64, 64 128. 128 yeah. It's the, so the same, power of two. Yeah. The power of two, yeah. everything. And why eight? The eight is the most significant number in our language. Eight is ut. Ut is utyun. Utyun is infinite a yeah, sign of infinity continuous 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 it's the only language that when you add the suffix utyun it becomes infinite but it's the only language that the suffix alone it makes sense yeah in none of the other languages that also use utyun mm -hmm. T I O N English. Yeah. Again, it's infinite, and but the suffix alone it doesn't make sense. And what is an eighth sideways? It looks like the infinity sign. Correct. That's yeah. also. Yeah. Now, most of the patterns of Armenian rugs, therefore, are monumental. They're not. They're not ornamental. Yeah. We do have ornamental carpets that were borrowed from, commissioned from neighboring models, flora and fauna sometimes, but Armenians did that too. But unlike the neighboring countries, for example, Persian rugs, if you look at a Persian rug, you can see, you can see clearly, you can even differentiate between different types of flowers. This is a, a rose, this is a carnation, it's clearly visible. You see a horseman hunting flowers, trees, brushes, so forth, so on. Medallions, ornamental. It doesn't have the same uh, messages that Armenian carpets in geometry that they have. We are right now at the just tip of the iceberg. I mean, we, we cannot decipher everything. It's almost like a lost language. Now, you, you, Mike, you're looking at the pattern. I mean, we're, we're just overwhelmed. I mean, yeah, with, guys, you you guys don't see the whole room. I, don't but there's, up, uh, uh, I wish I could turn the camera around for uh, everybody to yeah, see what we're... Yeah. You know yeah. what this is? Yeah. What this is? That is... I mean, it looks like a different version of the swastika. Sort of. It is. Yeah. What this pattern is? That's... You have the same thing in the border. Yeah. Um, now, in that case... Yeah, it is. It's the same thing as the border all the way across. Yeah. Yeah. But w what does what it mean, does though? What does it mean? Yeah, what does it mean? If you pay attention, in this case, the message that's hidden in here, it's the negative. It's not the pattern you see. It's what's between the pattern. It's another swastika. Oh, yeah. There we go. You're right. You uh, see, yeah, I mean, there are space. things like this yeah. that it takes years of observation and comparative, and you have to compare. Haraj, uh, just to go back on on the, the image we're talking about the uh, the deer, uh, we had a um, uh, an audience member, Hasmik, uh, asking us, "Is the red deer known as Maral?" Yes, I just made a post yesterday. I think Maral uh, is also what we call the deers. Okay. Yeah, Maral. Oh, there you go, Hasmik. We answered Maral your question. Jan, Hasmik. <laughs> <laughs> Maral, beautiful name, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my cousin's name is Maral. Yeah, uh, yeah there, at one time, Armenian Highland had a red deer, which was the biggest deer next to the moose. That was huge. My God, moose are huge. Yeah. Moose are now, big, the, next big, to the yeah. moose, the wow. biggest deer was the red deer. Unfortunately, it's extinct it now. Yeah. Since uh, quite some time, it's been overhunted and uh, they uh, overcut the forestry. Anyway. Humans do humans. Uh, 
So, I don't know. Did I ask you, answered your yeah, question? Yeah, or I mean, well, carried yeah, away yeah, with it. Yeah. Um, I mean, that answered my question as well. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. We're, we're ex- it's deja vu with Kevork. A little. <laughs> no, no a little my, my question sometimes. was going to be about the, uh, the, you know, you being the incredible expertise, having the incredible expertise of rug making and kind of understanding the history of art form. Uh, you know, how, what, have you deciphered well i mean you kind of said it but you know if you want to maybe in a different way we were asked the question was going to be what have you deciphered through your studies of the art form over your lifetime uh what do these symbols and icons mean you know uh frankly uh so far there were several attempts about deciphering these patterns and most of the existing literature on the patterns are really a joke, okay? Uh, Let me say that except few maybe, all those books that are written about oriental rugs, carpets, patterns and all that, they are just propaganda tools, okay? Most of them was written by dealers, Mm-hmm. There are very select, very few real scholars who wrote the books that made sense. But even those scholars that wrote those books, they were not weavers. A weaver can see something that an art historian might no, not. No, absolutely. Dealer will write books, uh, will make these stories fantasies about those rugs the flying carpet the aladdin yeah, what to bring up the that, value up that's the what value. the dealer does that's the whole thing yeah so and unfortunately the w- other authors basically copied what was previously said and that's why we have this all uh wrong assumption wrong information wrong yeah. information and right now i feel like those people are like those three blind men in a room with an elephant and each one touching a different part and saying, oh, we have a pipe here. Oh, we have a, no, we have a rope here. Oh no, we have a wall here. And they don't know there's an elephant there sitting, (laughs) right? (laughs) Because they didn't do their own research. Now, as far as I'm concerned, what I'm doing, I didn't even touch off, touch the, tip of the iceberg i just caught one line and i'm not letting it go yeah. i just started deciphering several things from who knows how many different symbols there are that are saying something they're like our alphabet yeah they're yeah, like it's a, it's a story it's, it's a story, story. Yeah, it's a story one thing i've noticed though we were talking about dialects mm-hmm. i've noticed that each region of historic Armenia, basically they had the same belief system and they portrayed the same iconography in a slightly different version. For example, one of the elements that are mostly used is the sun, Arab. For example, I have a carpet that reflects a shining sun, Arab Ashur, that was woven in a village of Zara next to Sepastia. And then I have another one woven in Jerapert, Sunik region of mm-hmm. Artsakh. They both are saying the same thing in a different dialect. Yeah. And you could clearly see the difference. Then we have the Vishabs. Vishabs are totally different. Dragons or then snakes. We have, yeah. we, have, we have the uh, tree of life. We have many other symbols but they all are saying the same thing in slightly different dialect yeah. like just like the language they speak the, the dialects they speak in fact if we want to take it further mike if we compare the patterns of armenian carpets to the old old traditional armenian costumes yeah yeah, a lot of the a lot of the symbols are very similar, at least. No. I mean, I haven't paid attention 
to that degree, but yeah. you're right. Look at Armenian costumes, those beautiful costumes mm. that Armenian women wore. Yeah. Uh, I have, I have. You're talking about eight. the taras and yeah, taras, yeah. taras, yeah. taras, yeah. 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 And, and, and what from the research I've done, every region in Armenia, Gyumri, Artsakh, um, mm-hmm. you know, Kidovakan, whatever yeah. you want to call it, every region has their own, they have their own design, yeah. unique, yeah. unique to their region of the taras that the women wore, yes. and they're just beautiful. It's amazing. The why detail is work. that? Did you ever ask why? Why neighboring region is completely different than this? Why is that? You know, I mean, I think I, it's to represent, you know, their their where their, you know, their neighborhood. I guess you want to call it their town or their region. You know, their their traditions. Listen, as Armenians, you know, we have these these traditions, right? Um, we call them, uh, you know, higher and more Um Oh my God! Why am I blanking out? Why are you blanking? Uh, I have no idea. What are you trying to say? <laughs> I'm saying like we have all these traditions, right? Right. But I think also within every region, they have their own little every, version of that tradition. Well, well look, the, so, the, the, the best example I could bring up, and I know I've probably brought this up before, so I'm not trying to butcher it, but do you remember what we know with Renaissance history, right? Mm-hmm. You had the city-states in, in, in what we know as Italy. You know, yeah. the Milanese were different. The Genoese were different. They had their own colors. They had their own... Um, symbols and exactly whatnot. representing your town, yeah. so, your and yeah. and and and, it, and each one of these cities could have been, for all we know, fifty miles apart. Yeah. But what he's asking is why is that? Why because of the okay. proximity? If we go back, right? If we go back to the Basric rug, you want to click on the Basric rug? Again? Yeah, of course. The corner one, the corner. This, this one. one. Okay. Let me. Now, uh, if you enlarge it. Let me uh, share this with our audience. What, what? Hold on. The corner. Yes. The next one. This one? No. Oh, the next, next one. The next, next slide. Oh. Next slide, yeah. Oh, oh, there enlarge, we go. Okay, enlarge yeah. the horseman. The horseman, okay. Okay. Let's, let me share this with no. our audience so they can see what we're seeing. Why is it that the weaver made such an effort to distinctly portray the tail of the horse you see the tail of the horse yeah 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 of course why and you see there are like a ribbon around it yeah okay right is that, here. Is that the way they dress their horses perhaps back in time uh. only the royal dignitaries were allowed to fold and tie the horses the tail. hair yeah and leave a ribbon around it. Uh. Because from a distance, anybody that looking at that horseman would know it's a royal dignitary. You better not approach. Got it. Got it. So just the horse itself. Was, just the horse uh, itself. Uh. And and also, and also the saddle said something. The patterns on the saddle also I mean, look, said they're something. different. Yeah, you know that's different. Now, that's different. Okay, going back to the even daras, this one is right? even that the, one's different. Yeah. yeah, going back to the daras or the Armenian women's costumes, they they didn't speak. They it's not like today when we see a beautiful girl, we go say, "Hey, where are you from?" <laughs> if if you know, one of our audience just jumped in and said, uh, "Alin." Uh, Kevorkian just said the customs, uh, the costumes are different from region to region, is because they didn't travel far beyond their borders like we do today. Also, is that yeah, a, that's correct, Alin. Yeah. Good correct. job, Alin. You're Thank right, you. Alin. <laughs> However, that also served another purpose, indirectly, maybe. If somebody saw this beautiful girl walking with that beautiful dress, would look at the dress and say, Oh, she's from Moosh. Oh, she's from such and such clan. It's an ah, ident- it's an she came, she yeah. came as a bride to Van, and she married to such and such yeah. clan, and she already has two kids. Just a boy from and the, a girl. Just from what she's wearing. Yes, she wow. yeah, it's an identifier. Wow. Now, if a truck stood here, the truck is brown. A man came down 
with brown shorts and brown t-shirts, what would you say? UPS. UPS. <laughs> I deal with it every day. Why didn't that cross my mind right away? <laughs> so, so every day I deal with UPS. So. So I don't. Again, like, again, the, the, the costumes of women yeah. and men that they had at that time, it was a statement of who they were. But that was a daily, co that's a daily. No, of course not. Yeah, course that's not. what I would say. Like, but yeah. even the daily ones had something. Some representation. Some representation. Yeah. Got, it. You know? Got it. They're not going to wear So not necessarily yet. ceremonial. There are ceremonial yeah, yeah, of ones course. also. Absolutely, they absolutely. But not necessarily. Um, yeah. So the same thing goes into carpets. Now, a lot of people ask me, they say about the... Uh, Prayer rugs. Prayer rugs are the ones that are directional. They don't, they're not symmetrical. Mm -hmm. They usually have a, an arch on top and uh, just similar to an altar, okay? And they say, oh, it has an arch. It's a prayer rug. It must be Islamic. No. no. Well, Islam's use it to pray on it, yes. But why it's Armenian? Yeah. Do we have a sample we can share with our audience? For uh, the pair rugs in the pair rug. The I'm not sure if I did give you, but it's a it's a simple directional uh, rug. directional rug. I don't know. Let me see if we have any. Oh, that, here. oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. We have a live one. one yeah. Forget the picture. Yeah. yeah. There you go. No, by this, the way, thing's, this, is this thing's silk. gorgeous. Our producer, Mira, just uh, assisted us. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> anyway, I don't know if they could see. Uh, anyway, anyway. Let, me, let me hold it close. I'm, I'm glad she's not... She, she, I'm, I'm glad she's not angry that we didn't see it. this. But yeah, that the, the, the detail on this... You know the guy, guys we were talking about how it almost looks like it's got pixels this thing's insanely detailed when you see this up close 480 knots per square inch I, wow it's yeah. silk anyway uh what i was saying what's the difference date between islam and christianity 600 years okay jesus <laughs> no, i'm just kidding well, I mean, they had their own, <laughs> sir. Yeah. You know, we know, more or less. They both are. Yeah, yeah, more came or from less. From Judaism, yeah. but Islam is much older. My theory is, if Islam's wanted to see what is a prayer, now, six hundred years or maybe four hundred years before, when was Echmiadzin built? Three, uh, 351, I believe. No, no 351 was the no, no, alphabet. Th three, wait. HML anyway, three. somewhere around there. So there is at least, at least four, five hundred uh, years difference. Four, I'm five. Like that. I, anyway, I'm what I'm saying is. Wait, did you say that Islam is older? No, no, the no, other no, no, way yeah, 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 no. The other way around, yeah. No, okay. No, the other way around. So Islam, the in Armenian churches, Traditionally, there were no benches. You yeah. either stand up or you kneel. And people wove commemorative rugs on the memory of the past ones. Mm -hmm. And they would donate it to the church. The floor of the church was covered by carpets on which people would kneel. And later in the mid to mid-century, it became much more common when weavers started becoming much more literate, started writing names. So on the deceased, when they see the, the name of the deceased, they would say a prayer. The perfect example of that is a, uh, is a 17, 18th century, early 18th, 1701 dated Gohar Rag, which states, I... Uh, I think I have the pictures uh, somewhere. I go hard. Uh, yeah, I, I, uh, yes, there, yes, 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 yes. I, I want to share that. Yeah. Um, oh my God, where is that? Uh, right there on the right. Is it this one? No. No, no. Go down. This one right, right here. Yeah. One. yeah. Okay. 
So I want to share this with you guys. Yeah. Uh, and uh, this is a, this is a perfect example. This is a perfect example of a gift given to the church. Okay. Okay. Yeah. There you go, guys. You get to see this. Yeah. Um, Dated seventeen oh one. This rug uh, represents a perfect, perfect example of a gift given to the church. And the church floor was covered with similar carpets, including the ones that resembled the altar. Mm -hmm. And many people uh, that came from far away, they wanted to have an altar-like place, a, a, a holy place, a, a small chapel in their home, quote-unquote chapel. So they would weave a carpet that reflects an altar and hang it on the wall and they would be their their, no, their no. place yeah their sanctuary their sanctuary yeah. Yeah. And, and also praying on the rug was also armenian now if we go to uh, old manuscripts old armenian manuscripts we clearly see on majority of them you see a carpet always almost always under the foot of the saint you see that um, carpet weaving in islam if during that time islams did not weave carpets of this magnificence you would Armenians think you would had. think they did i mean when you they see did it, it now i know in yeah, fact well, yeah. in fact again again historically again ibn khaldun in his records, writes when Arabs were were um, ruling Armenia. In the taxes that they had to uh, collect from Armenia, at that time there was no kings, there were meliks, there were mm -hmm. the princes, the governors. Among the taxes, they had to give Armenian carpets as a part of payment as a as as a tax yeah. carpets were yeah. like a they had value. of course they had value yeah. Yeah. and 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 he writes about this this is not a it's a recorded so it's not far-fetched to assume that carpets were introduced to the arab world by us i mean if you look at until today the oldest Arabic or uh, uh, carpet weaving from those areas are so crude and they don't pass more than three, four hundred years maximum. If, if that's a big if. Yeah. The best thing they did, they wove hasir, they call it, from reed. It's a, just a blank reed, uh, like a, a killing, mm -hmm. but it's, it's, they call it hasir. That's the best thing they could do. They, they never, ever did weave carpets in this sophistication. Before you continue, I want to read this. Uh, yeah, I, I know ahead. for our audience who's going to be listening to us later on on the podcast platforms that aren't watching, who aren't visually going to be see this, but this carpet right here, which was from 1700 AD, right? Yeah. Um, so the, the woman who weaved this carpet and I know the audience can see this on the screen, but it says, I, Gohar, full of sin and weak of soul, with my newly learned hands, wove this rug, basically. Whoever needs this, say a Seize word. This. Oh, see, sorry, yeah. I, my eyes. A see, whoever, no, it says whoever reads this. Reads this. Huh? Yeah, whoever reads this, say a word of mercy for me in the year of the 1149 that's no, beautiful 1149 is the older armenian date the the old uh, date which coincides with 1701 
That's okay, it, that's got it. it. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, so and and this is actually woven. Hindomar, in, we call it Hindomarov. Yeah, but for the audience, this is actually woven into the rug. This is written like they, yeah. you know. So yeah, uh, and it's such a beautiful thing about her, you know. Yeah, if you uh, enlarge it, they could see the inscription on the top. Yeah, zoom in, zoom into that top part. Um, you see the top part. Yeah, is yeah, just, no, yeah. I, I I see that. Yeah, but what I I mean, what she, I'm trying to get into. The, why she wrote this you know what, what, do you know much about it what's behind it what the well, message is we, uh, we we don't know we don't have her image we don't know what she did because she's feeling so sinful i don't know if the there there made her feel that <laughs> <laughs> you're so sinful you gotta do this. oh my god you have to you <laughs> have to weave her around right. so we can Oh man, that's yeah, hilarious. I, just, I don't know. I don't no, know. no, I mean, it's a pretty powerful message from a woman to say, you know, forgive, yeah. you know, my sin and weak no. of souls. So. Uh, remember, if if from here you take the central uh, medallion of this, enlarge it, Vic. Can you enlarge the central that cross? Enlarge. Oh, it. yeah, yeah, that yeah. part. Yeah. Okay, give enlarge me a second. It. Let me. Uh, okay, if people can uh, uh, actually print okay. that image in their mind. Wait, wait, hold on. Yeah, that one. Okay. Let me uh by the way, the central pattern of this one technical okay. difficulties guys, it's okay. sorry. It's okay. We're yeah. trying to well that's that's big enough. Windows there you go. That's the viewer. one sucks. Now look at it. You Windows. See, you see a cross and then you see an X. Do you remember the panel on the bas yeah. What well, you the were mentioning panel? earlier, yeah. It's eight points. eight points. Eight points. Well, there's four points. Yeah. And then there's the, if you go like this, it's, it's eight, eight points. points. Yeah. This is the sophisticated version or a different dialect of the same symbol what we see in Basri Grag. And we have so many variations of this. That's why I call each region had its own and dialect, own dialect yeah. executing a any form of symbolism it's it's yeah. this specific style is different than the style that was on that previous rug yeah, yeah. but yeah. if you outline the main lines yeah. it's it's the same thing mm -hmm. they're saying the same thing in a different dialect that's so beautiful wow I think we every should just single, throw our questions out and single, let Haras. Every single <laughs> pattern is just We're perfect. talking about it, right? Every single per like pattern is uh, almost identical. It's like you copied and pasted it. Uh, yeah, it's unbelievable. You know, it, it, you look at this rug. Again, I I look at rugs on carpets and any woven textile from totally different perspective than of course you do. General people do. I I look at it and say how this was made what it takes to do this curve, what it takes to do that color. Talk about color. Now, if you follow yeah. that line, you see that most of the Armenian rugs talking about colors. Did you have a question? I don't know, somebody, I, I, tell, <laughs> yeah. I keep going. Yeah, yeah, keep you going. Yeah, keep yeah, going. Yeah, we can get into color, let's talk about no. the colors. Uh, yeah. I, I just want to rip this right there. <laughs> if you noticed, it's like, God, there you go. <laughs> if you noticed, if you noticed, you know, oh, let's go, let's go. Uh, let me see, where are we? Well, we're talking about you know the 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 messaging in the carpets. The so we want to go into the, the colors, how we got the colors. Yeah, let's, let's get into yeah. let's, let's get go into the to colors. manuscripts. Let's start with manuscripts. Okay, let's do that. We are okay. We went to Basric next to the Basrics. Uh, this one. Okay. Okay. This one. What is it? 11th century illuminated manuscript of King Gagi. Now, some people, valid question. They say, how do you know at that time? Uh, what do you have? Well, the oldest depictions of carpets in our uh, tangible evidences are depicted in the Armenian illuminated manuscripts. manuscripts yeah. those are the oldest mm -hmm. phot photos that we have yeah yeah okay uh, our manuscripts oldest ones i don't know if there is an eighth century but i think it's the eighth century seventh eight? or eighth century no i, believe. I think i think anyway it doesn't matter 
mean, yeah. hundred yeah. years. They were they were they were Andra redone. Do- I believe they were redone sometime in either the tenth or eleventh century. But they, I'll, I'll ask my friend in Armenia who is an uh, expert in yeah. Levon Trukasazian, the art uh, director. Is he watching? We can have him join I, live. I hope he's <laughs> watching. <laughs> we can anyway, invite him. Anyway, um, I'm sure he will ask. He will answer me. If you enlarge this, if you enlarge, you see that where they are sitting, they are sitting on the carpet. You see. They're sitting on the carpet. Mind you, all these manuscripts, the dyes were also used, uh, the Armenian Kochnil, Vortangarmir. Vortangarmir. Yeah, Vortangarmir, contrary to the general belief that it only, as the name implies, uh, it's only red dye, no. Vortangarmir produced many shades, many different colors, depends on the mordant you have used. We're gonna get to the Vortangarmir. But if you keep going, you see several facts in these manuscripts that display what the carpet is used for. Then the next one, we have the uh, 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 Milky Queen right under her foot. Again, another carpet, and look at those colors. Again, Vortangarmir. If you guys can see this. Yeah. yeah, if you enlarge it, they could see Milke Queen is sitting on a throne under her oh, feet is, this is a yeah. carpet. Yeah, right oh, that one, okay, yeah, yeah, let, yeah. Me, let me, let me and zoom in. Yeah. Now, is this one? Yeah, yeah that's another the one. one. And, and the list goes on and on. Now. This predates the European Renaissance era. Yeah. The Renaissance we call it because there was this yeah, boom, an explosion. The yeah. explosion of art. Now, if we follow, okay, we see that at that time, at that time, the tradition of carpet usage was not very familiar to Europeans. No, this is not it. That's okay. This is uh, no. I'm, go I'm back. skipping to yeah. I think we, that yeah. was a different picture. It's okay. okay. You can put that. You can put that no, one. I, that here, scripture is Marco Polo's handwriting. Marco Polo's. Uh, yeah, we'll get which to is that. Pretty cool. We'll, yeah, we'll get to that. Okay. If we keep a sequence, you see that there is uh, the Lombardian. Madonna and Child, if you compare that with Milky Queen and few other Armenian manuscripts, you'll see the same thing copied. Okay? Uh, if you find this one, that one is... It's Lombardian. Yep, there we there go. There we go. You see? Yeah. Now, if you compare... They bought, in both manuscripts, there's a carpet under their foot. Why is that? Carpet under the saint's foot. It separates, it separates the, where she is standing, or he, the saint, from the common area. It's a holy space. So there was a, so there was a significance for... Of course, yeah. of course. So- just like you were saying, if if somebody prayed to it like it was their sanctuary, exactly, right? This was a signifier that this individual. Also, it was a throne. Okay. It was it was separate from the regular common people. It was a saint. It was a king. It was a prince. Okay. And here, the next one. This one. Uh, let me see. Well, that if you keep going, no. Hold on, let me. Anyway, let me. Uh, I don't think I have that. No, unfortunately. Well, you have one of them, but yeah, I have. Those seem to be like a bunch of them put together. I, I, I don't seem to one, have that. that I have, have but yeah, I don't have that's one. It. That's it right there. This? No, no. Scroll down. Scroll down. That one. We were no. on that earlier. Yeah, we were yeah, on this yeah, one. No, earlier. not that one. Anyway. No. 
Yeah, I, I don't think I have that one. Uh, well, let's see. Anyway, uh, the one yeah, that I don't. no, I thought I sent you. Anyway, no, it's okay, no problem. Uh, the next one that I made, put that one on. Put this that one? one, no, yeah. the one below that, that that one. Yes, mm -hmm. okay. Now, if anybody does a Google search, maybe later I post it in the comments. In Renaissance era painting, virgin and child enthroned, but uh, uh, there is a beautiful painting by, by uh, Hans Holbein, uh, was made in 1497. Uh, no, he was born in 1497. Anyway, around 1500. It was the illustration of uh, Madonna and child. She's sitting on the throne and just like the same posture as that Armenian uh, illuminated manuscript that you see on your uh, screen right now, okay? It's the same thing, but this is a painting, huge Renaissance era painting. And there is a carpet under her foot. Vic, you see that? I do see yeah. it. You, yeah. see the, yeah. you see the pattern on her foot, under yeah. her feet. Look at the pattern and look at this rug. It has the same eight, well, look, look four to... this rug. You see this rug? Yeah. You see this pattern? Mm -hmm. And you see this pattern? It's the same thing. It's the same thing. This rug is an Armenian rug dated 1888. It's sitting here. Wow. <laughs> it's identical. I mean, for generations. Jesus. I mean, I, I, I didn't expect that. It's like, okay, well, you see this, 1880, it's right there. It's, there. Yeah. it's like, anyway, what? <laughs> anyway, and here is, a, here is a comparison. You see, this wow. is her under her. Unfortunately, feet. we don't have that picture to share with you guys. Um, so we're kind of going off of what. Anyway, uh, yeah. I, I will post yeah. it. I, I go will, go follow him on on uh, Facebook. Facebook, yeah. I'll send it. Maybe yeah. you yeah, can or, post it in the sure. YouTube. Yeah, we'll yeah. post it. Yeah. Those, we'll post uh, it, guys. Um, anyway, uh, the, did you get this one? I sent you these. Uh, I don't think I have that. Let me see. <sighs> um, there is another carpet that uh, is the Girapert in another Renaissance painting. As a matter of fact. Um, I don't have. I'll send these next episode. <laughs> with all fairness, you yeah. can post it in the comments section in yeah, the YouTube. Sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah, of course. Yeah, Do yeah. that. Yeah, absolutely. I promise I'll send it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I thought I sent it, but apparently not. Uh, anyway. It's okay. It was a nice surprise. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyway. It's only we, five feet away the, from us. In yeah. the Armenian Rock Society, there is an art historian. Her name is Lauren Arnold. She did, oh, she's been working on this for many, many years. Lauren Arnold uh, did a thesis. She's, she wrote a book and she, had a, she has a series of seven lectures on YouTube right now. Lauren Arnold did a huge inventory on Renaissance paintings. She pulled out about 300 classic paintings mm -hmm. in which it depicts carpets, Armenian carpets under the saint's foot or under the, on the throne or in the subject matter, carpets are used. And all those carpets were Armenian. Renaissance era. Um, of course, today they would say Turkish because uh, that. <laughs> yeah, they were. You know. Anyway, we're not going to go into yeah, that. Yeah. That's can a we different subject. Can we get into the colors, like how they yeah, were? Yeah, we're going to go to yeah. the colors. I yeah. mean, one thing was. So if, if you notice, if you keep going, you see that most of those rugs are from starting from Basri. Red background, red background, red background. Where are we, we now? Yeah, red. Uh, everything is everything is red background. Yeah, there was a few over here that we saw. Yeah. Scroll down. No, no, scroll further down. 
Okay, right. Anything before the coach Neil. You have that coach Neil photos there. That's Mother Armenia. Yeah, that That's another pictorial. No, keep going. Keep going? Yeah. Yeah. What's the next one? Go hard. Next go one. Hard. We jump back and forth, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's classic dragon. As you can tell, I haven't right. done a PowerPoint for a long time. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay. That's a probably 17th or 18th century rug uh, that is combined with Vishabs, dragons, and sunburst. Vishabakor, Yev, Arevasho combined. Anyway, keep going, red. That's the Kochnil. That's the mm -hmm. Armenian Vortang Armir. Yeah. Okay. Uh, which only grows in Aradian. Which is abundant uh, in the region. Yeah, abundant. Yeah. This is a unique uh, uh, insect that lives under the ground uh, and they feed on, from the sap of a certain plant. And their, the liquid in their body is red. Keep going. And we and present it to you in all up, of its beauty. Yeah, that's the one. That's the insect. And uh, in late fall, they surface to mate. Um, when they mate, uh, the male grow wing. They grew wing. Mm -hmm. uh, only the male. Only the male. Yeah. And uh, when, they, uh, when they mate, the female lays her eggs and she dies. Oh. And... Their lifespan is like one year. And from those uh, eggs, larvae comes and they, s again, they feed on the sap and the cycle continues. And uh, Armenians would go and collect these. And from these insects, not only dyes, they made elixirs. Wow. And, and the, uh, the recipes for medicinal purpose, for medicinal elixirs, uh, are recorded and it's in Madenataran. They also used, women used it as a makeup for their face, for their lips. In fact, my wife Mira has a few bottles of those. Really? Uh, el elixirs and, and the... Uh, Don't worry, they're safe. The I'm not going to use them. The oil. <laughs> uh, she has those. She brought some. So what, what what type of what type of elixir specifically would you happen to know? Health elixirs, they sure, said. Of I course. Mean, um, but if they used it was for various for various things. Illnesses or uh, what, whatever the case is. No? Yeah, whatever yeah. the case is. Wow. So what, what was the process of how did they extract the well, color? Was it is it like just smushing them or no, first they would put it in um, in metal pots next to the fireplace until the, until they yeah. completely dry. Once they dry, they just grind it, mm -hmm. becomes like a powder. Yeah. And then they mix it. If they mix it with certain percentage of vinegar, it gives certain ah. color. If they mix it with certain types of uh, salt, it gives a certain hue. And they used many different minerals. Depends what you're using. Alum, copper, zinc, uh, iron, each, each mordant, each uh, mineral would uh, react differently with it and gives a different hue, different color. And we call that mordant. Okay? Now imagine at that time, those people had these formulas. How, that's, that's what I was going to say. How I did mean, these people you're discover you're talking this? Like, how did, right? How did somebody for, like, figure this out? Yeah. Well, the, again, you know they're just I mean? testing. Uh, and it's funny that we talked about Edgar uh, asked us the question is like, how did they, you know, how did the, the what common ingredients they, they use to get these, uh, you know, these colors? Well, we know they used, yeah. they had wine. Yeah. Okay. When the wine became sour, it became acidic, right? Yeah. They figured out what can they do with the vinegar. You know, my wife uses only vinegar and orange peel to do her house cleaning, wiping windows. She puts, she, yeah, um, I don't know where she got that from. Uh, actually, no, no. My, my wife, peel. my wife does the same thing. She, I don't know who she heard it from, especially glass, no. cleaning glass. Yes. Shower glass. You know how you have the water spots? Yeah. 
you know, it's Why common, right? So vinegar. vinegar, orange peel, or, or even lemon peel. Yeah. 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 Just, I mean, it smells, but One whatever. Is the, hell, acid. the hell with Windex. Yeah. Yeah. You have, you have citric acid and acidic acid mixed. And they knew all these things, all yeah. these formulas. This is incredible. Yeah. We're not so we're not so advanced. Uh, we just have the, like electronic well, equipment. We're, Mike, we're, we're we not. are we are in a different way. Electronically. electronically, electronically, but but with with things that were functional on yeah. a daily basis. Well, we replaced it with Windex <laughs> chemicals that are. Uh, let's not get into it. Even worse for mm -hmm. you than anything. You know. Don't don't tell that to that Greek man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I won't. I won't. Um, but, again, I want to thank everyone who's joining us live on YouTube and, and Facebook. Thank you guys. Uh, you know, this is our what second live now with, uh, as well, far as, well, no, no, first, know, first, first, we're first outside of the, our normal well, compounds. Yeah. But you know, uh, we, if, if you don't know about us, if you're joining us for the first time, we, this is the Med Hostnet podcast, uh, our podcast, this is our 17th episode. Uh, if you want to hear our past episodes, you can search for us and listen to us on every major podcast platform. We're also on YouTube as well uh, with audio spectrums and in our lives with the video. Uh, we are joined by Harach here, who is an amazing... I, I do want to call you an historian because yeah, you are a historian. historian. I made uh, the mistake of saying yeah, that, somewhat. Yeah. That was my mistake. <laughs> um, and and we're, talk, we're discussing the history of Armenian rugs, rug making, and just pretty much everything that has to do with the yeah, Armenian sure culture the uh, going That's back 8,000 years. That's the elixir. That's the elixir. Ortang Armir elixir. Wow. I don't know how, does it, does it show? No, you got to get a little bit closer, closer. But Yeah, just a little bit closer. There you go. Ooh. Turn it around. There you go. Yeah, turn it around to the... Can everybody see it? And that's the copy from the manuscript that has the formulas. You see, that's a copy of the manuscript. Wow. In Madinataran. That's, That's a good Anyway. Uh, so, uh, Haraj. Do we have time? How much time? Uh, we're we're so? about two hours in, uh, which is fine. Don't, don't worry about it. No? Podcast. Don't worry about it. We yeah. can go as we have our People audience. People are not tired? No. Are you guys tired? Comment. If you're tired, we'll end the show. Uh, I don't know. It we're, seems like people are enjoying it. So. Okay. Uh, should we continue or yeah, we, yeah. okay yeah. Yeah. all right then let's go let's go to the colors again let's go to the colors again and i think i passed to you some samples of uh, uh, carpets from different regions of armenia if you go to all the way okay let's continue from vortangarmir right from here on yeah yeah from here on it's so okay. small. Yeah. They're it's, so small. That, uh, yeah. They're and tiny. Just, I want to share this yeah. to people to see how yeah, small ahead. they are. Yeah. They're they're very similar, but uh, just imagine elongated, um, elongated. Uh, uh, see, people are that? saying, "Keep going, keep going." So we're okay, going to keep okay. going. <laughs> uh, elongated ladybug. Just imagine elongated ladybug. That's the that's the size. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and if you keep going, you see that in Armenian uh, tradition, one of the favorite, most favorite colors is red. Red, of yeah. course. And traditionally, Armenian brides would wear red. Not really? White. Not white? Yes. Well, that was our color. It is the color of fire. Yeah. It is, which, which, yeah. which is the essence of life, okay? red and uh, no wonder you see all these armenian if you keep going you see samples of samples different regions of armenia having uh, different rugs different rugs with oh, that red, red 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 and and it goes on and on and this tradition by the way it was when Armenia had this, and dignitaries came to visit Armenian kings, Armenian princes. The only thing that they were impressed with was, was the carpets. They didn't have it, 
but Armenian kings on their thrones, they had those carpets. And and that's, so So I, I wanted to ask you this earlier. It wasn't one of the topics, but you bring it up. So just a quick little side question. So, you know, you've told us that, you know, the, a lot of the common folk from different areas made these rugs, right? With their own stories, their own whatever it is, their own dialects. Um, with... With that, they also must have been commissioned by... That came much, much later. later. Sure, now, we, but, you know, but, we're talking commissioning, yeah, commissioning but, or is love, more wrong industrial. Word, yeah. Wrong word, wrong word. Maybe maybe uh, they were you know, asked to make these rugs for the royalty. No? Yes, they yeah, did. Of, of course. course. You yeah. don't expect the king yeah. or the queen sits down and we've covered... Although we have, we have a folk story yeah. about a prince... While he is hunting, he falls in love with this shepherd girl and goes, talks to her. She doesn't talk to him. She, he follows her. He finds the house. Then he goes and asks her hand from the father. The girl says, well, you're a prince, but what kind of trade do you have? She says, I'm a prince. I don't have any trade. I don't have to work. She says, no, my husband has to have a trade. Otherwise, I won't marry. It's a good woman. He says, okay. He goes and says, okay, I'm going to learn a trade and come back. He goes and comes back with a carpet. He says, I wove this carpet. The girl looks at it and says, okay, I'll marry you. They marry. Years passes. They fall into war. He falls as a slave with the enemy. He convinces the enemies that I can be a good asset. I can weave carpets where you could sell it. So he weaves carpets in his prison cell. They sell it. It's so beautiful it reaches to the queen because it's such an elaborate carpet. It reaches the queen. The queen looks at it, recognizes the patterns, and secretly, supposedly, the king also drew in the symbols where he is being captured. Oh, wow. The queen what sends... What a smart guy, huh? The queen sends army or yeah you know some force send help help and yeah you know sos sos yeah, SOS, yeah. yeah. And send they, help and they they rescue him it, this is an armenian wow. folk story <laughs> it, okay? it, it you know what's funny about this whole you say it's a folk story but we keep, we've mentioned this before on, on on many of our episodes we have so many amazing stories now yeah. it could be true it could be just a folk story but these are, I mean, people make movies out of stuff like this, you know? And, well, in and, fact, there and, is, there is. No, no, but what I'm saying is like with our new young generation coming up in the film industry and so forth, uh, even cartoons, like we need to start getting these stories out there to the masses, to, to, to the world, not just Armenians, to the world, you know? Because you see so many other stuff happening with other cultures. It could sure. be Hispanic, yeah. you know, you have the new Disney movie that just came out. All this stuff, and, and and we need to start doing this, guys. We need to come together. I know we have amazing executives uh, in Netflix, Disney, Hulu. We need to start coming up and, and having people write scripts, um, to put together the production, invest, um, you know, do crowdfunding, whatever it is. To bring these stories to life, because I, as he was saying this, I was imagining. Can you imagine like like a cartoon of this? Great story, you know, great story, uh, and it really and it is. can relate to so many other cultures because it's it's a human story. A message in it. It's, it's a message, yeah. you know. There is a, there is a wise message in it. Yeah. Anyway, by the way, by the clever, way, there is one. Guy. There is one. There is a movie. Um, uh, three segments each 20 minutes was made for TV, I think. Uh, you know, we talked about Gohar rug. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And that rug is uh, is uh, designated as a Vishabagork, yeah. a dragon rug. And uh, the, the cartoon series, those three parts, are called Vishabagork. If 
in Armenian, if you go on YouTube and write Visha Bakor, yeah. those movies come out. Supposedly, um, uh, f from an egg, a baby dragon comes out, was rescued by this dog, and it's a cartoon. Yeah. And then the they find a home where the girl is weaving the carpet, and the girl's name is uh, Gohar. The Gohar is weaving a carpet, which is a Vishabagorg. Yeah. And then the dragon jumps it. Anyway, if people, if you, um, if you want, I don't want to uh, tell the whole story, but um, in Armenian, Vishabagorg. In Armenia. There you go, everyone. So go on YouTube. YouTube. Well, well yeah, don't you leave you us you, yet. You yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, no, to do no, after, just, the yeah. Yeah. After, after, after the show. After the show. show. Don't because, leave. <laughs> yeah. That's there. It's not going anywhere. Yeah. We're going to be finishing shortly here. Um, anyway. Um, but my point was yeah. that, you know, yeah, I'm you sorry. said there's, there, there's a, there's, you know, yeah, there's that small, but uh, I always, we talk about this a lot. Like I keep pushing this. We have a new generation that's growing up that is, that needs to learn about these stories. And we have a generation that is old enough that is involved in the Hollywood scene, technology and all this stuff. We need to start telling our stories yeah, just are, like other cultures. They're, they're amazing stories. You might, yeah. I mean, look, how many times have you and I made fun of ourselves for making multiple movie references? No joke. Well, but, maybe they, you about yourself. Well, but well, oh, come on. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you leave yourself out of this one. But anyway, do you know Tigran episodes yeah. uh any of the other stories we've talked about they almost sound like anything we've ever watched yeah a, a lot of movies so much makes you wonder did they really pick and choose these because you know a lot of the people that make these films they're doing a lot of historical research of course grabbing from here grabbing from here grabbing from here it's not yeah. from one specific timeline you know closer I mean? to the mic <laughs> one specific <laughs> timeline you're, you're absolutely right mike i totally agree with you but everybody's saying the same thing Okay, no one is taking a step to do yeah. anything. Well, we took That's a step to do this dilemma. podcast, so I you think did. yeah, you well, did. somebody wanna... can take the step to do the movies exactly, and the thing, so. or, or you know, we can join. I mean, I'm open. I'm open. I'm available. If if somebody is willing to do a movie like that, even with the real carpets, if they want to see, it's here. Come talk to us. Let's collaborate. Yeah. Let's collaborate. Yeah. Um, it's not a task one person can do alone. No, of course not. Absolutely not. So, uh, you know, everybody's uh, enjoying this. They want us to keep going. Um, <laughs> Connor, Connor just said, uh, I can't fall asleep. This is too good. I can't sleep. <laughs> Connor, I'm sorry. I don't know if you're in the East Coast yeah, or the West where, Coast. Where are you from, Connor? Um, but um, thank you guys for joining us. Hey, our boys from the Wise Nuts, Arno, uh, Edgar, and, and even... Armond is here. Armond Hopar. Armond Hopar. Arno. Uh, thank you guys Edgar. for doing this and joining us. Okay. Appreciate you know, it. Let's go. Let's go to uh, the images okay. again. Yeah, so, let's go yeah. to the, the red. The red field carpets of Armenian carpets became so popular. I was telling that when when dignitaries visited Armenian uh, royalties, what's the best thing they could give as a gift? carpets because they were so impressed they couldn't lift their eyes from those carpets where the throne was on or sometimes even to give them that body of dal yeah body of yeah. Dal is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. when they came they would put those carpets in front of them so they would also walk on their level understand so we saw in the manuscript as carpets as throne if a dignitary came and they want to talk, they have to be on the same level. Yes. So they would put that carpet and they would come. And as they would leave, that carpet would be their gift. Now they took that gift to their country, okay? To their palaces. What are they going to do with it? Whatever they learned as a tradition, they're going to use the same thing. So yeah. they would They're put all, it in their throne. Yeah. As you see in the manuscripts, in Renaissance manuscripts, in Renaissance paintings, Armenian manuscripts, 10th century, yeah. 11th century, and Renaissance paintings, 14th, 15th, 16th century, the paintings are exactly mimicking what in Armenian 
illuminated manuscripts are. Yeah. A carpet on the throne, a carpet on the table. There is a there is another uh, famous uh, Renaissance painting called the Ambassadors. Right, just like this, the carpet was on the table, Armenian carpet on the table. You know, if if I remember as a child in Armenia, um, especially when we go to like relatives with older folks. Like it was, it was normal to have carpet on the table, absolutely, or carpet on the couch, absolutely. And it felt like I didn't understand that, like why there was carpet on it. Yeah, you know, body of dalis, body yeah. of dalis. I'm giving you the. Honor. I mean, again, I'm still nervous. The fact that we are here with a 180 yeah, year for, old for any, rug. Yeah, for anybody that joined us late, the the rug. That Guys, we have all this okay. set up on. So you see this? This is, is 180 years old. And we have drinks. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so that tradition was copied from where they received the gift from, right? They did the same thing. They did the same thing. Eventually, keep going with the photos. Right. All right. Eventually, that tradition became pretty common. From royalties came down to, uh, here is another beautiful carpet. Keep going, keep going. I'm just uh, giving you samples of different carpets from different regions of Armenia, and they all depicting, if you see the foundation, they all red, if you keep going. And that tradition continued, continued for ages, okay? Uh, I think they want us to zoom in a little bit here. Let's yeah, see. Try to, yeah, there you go. You guys want to see the writings? Um. Shushi Baba, that's what it says. This one, Shushi Baba. <laughs> yeah, wow. this one, this rug is in San Francisco, actually in uh, in Bay Area, in um, in uh, Berkeley. Berkeley. I think that's uh, Garbis's rug. Yeah, Pro I, yeah. Go on, okay. go on. I'm just giving you samples of different regions and showing you that almost every uh, Armenian carpet has a red background. And that's yeah. the tradition. Here is... Here's another uh, one. Let me, yeah. let me for the audience yeah. to see, I just another, to start... The sister of this rug is right behind us on yeah. the wall. I was going to say, yeah. it looks yeah. almost just now, like this. Yeah, if you look at this rug behind us, there is an inscription there. It's 1915, and it says... Ice, oh yeah, way over in the corner. Ice Gabas Imma. This is my carpet. Uh, Gabas is in uh, classic Armenian carpet. And uh, by the way, in Armenian, Gork. Gork. It's not yeah. carpet, right? Yeah. Gork. Gork. Gork is in Hittite. Really? In Hittite means uh, a covering cloth. It's a, it's, it's a Hittite uh, term. So we're talking about the carpet behind us. Yeah. Yeah, right there. This, so this is from 1915. That one is 1915. The sister of yeah, this I don't one. Know if they could see it. Yeah. I mean, they can't probably see it, but on the edge over there. Yeah, somewhere right, yeah. up, right up there. On the, on says, the, on yeah. the, on the, uh, the little right pattern there, on the yeah. very edge. Yeah. Yeah. There are two rugs like this that have exactly the same date, 1915. 15. One of them is here. The other one is housed in Hovannes Tumanian's museum in Armenia wow. in the dining room on the wall, just like this. This is the sister. Wow. That's amazing. That's amazing. So again, here we go with that tradition. Oh, this is a saddlebag. Again, they used, they used a red. This saddlebag is right here. It's on that couch. You see that? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. There it is. Yeah, this right there. saddlebag, 1903, I believe. Yeah. S should we show the live version instead of the pictures? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, we can't. I'm a little one. bit lost right now. This. Uh, I'm afraid to touch it. But yeah. Here. Yeah. Oh, I was gonna help you. I was gonna help you hold it. Oh, Wait. take off your. <laughs> now. Here. Let's do this. Now, if you can bring, okay. Let's since we're at it. Go ahead and focus to the center of this saddlebag's uh, star. Focus, uh, focus, you focus. Me, you want me to, oh, the picture. Can, okay. The picture, the picture. Okay. Can you? Okay, no, no. Go to the red, the bag side. You mean top here? Yeah, right there. You okay, see that focus. star? Yeah. 
Go, go, now. Okay, the birds are upside down. Now, if you go the other way, all the way up, all the way up, go, 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 go. Now this is the right side, okay. Remember we were saying that the patterns are um, language? Mm -hmm. They're saying something. What is this pattern saying, this iconography in the red field? Well, I mean, I see that it says 1903 here, right? No, okay. Not the yeah, one. initials. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And 1903. Other yeah. than that. Eight points. Eight. I mean, you have the same thing. You have the, the V-shop, which is the dragon. Right? Where is the V-shop? Aren't or these it? it? Like okay, those, those are actually uh, zoomorphic. If you look carefully, they're V-shops, but they also uh, are similar to eagles standing eagles oh okay okay two flanking eagles looking inside okay at the eight pointed stars the eight pointed stars which is utyun yeah utyun and the center is the cross the christianity there it is yeah let me, let me let me turn this uh hold on let me go back to mike if you want to bring it back to close to the camera so they can kind of see what the audience can see if you get it closer yeah that's that's the lift it further up to the center yeah yeah you guys see that do you see the cross in 1903 the cross and the two eagles yeah the yeah. two eagles the two uh, flanking eagles looking inside are protecting the cross which is which is eternal okay how do we know eternal you have that eight pointed star utyun we talked about the yeah. utyun okay now if you see those two birds or the dragons facing outwards then they are protecting whatever is they are protecting yeah. from the uh, outer enemies. This symbology actually predates, predates Christianity. The same symbology is used, the same meaning in Khachkars. If mm. you look at the Khachkar, there is the cross, dominating cross, mm -hmm. and almost always, always the on the base, yeah. on the base, you see two flanking birds, and eventually those flanking birds became into like leaf-like mm -hmm. forms. And at the base of the cross, almost always you see the eight not the eight-pointed star, but the eight-winged wheel of eternity. Yes. That's also Armenian. Yes. Okay? The wheel of eternity, eight-pointed. So, eight-pointed uh, star or uh, eight-winged wheel of eternity. The wheel of eternity, yeah. Uh, cross. This iconography predates Christianity. The older times, it was not the cross, Yet, but it was the tree of life, the tree, the Dohmain uh, Zar, we call it in Armenian, the tree, uh, family tree, let's say, okay, Dohmain Zar, flanked by, at that time it was two dragons, there weren't birds, always dragons, either flanking inwards or flanking outwards, outwards. Yeah. protecting, yeah. and over the will of eternity. Yeah. In, when we became Christian, those dragons were replaced by doves. That's what it was. From predator to prey. Prey. Think about the psychological yeah, the impact. Yeah, the significance of that. Oh, the big symbolic time. Symbolic significance. The symbolic yeah. significance yeah. and the psychological impact on Armenian people. Anyway, yeah, yeah. that's a, that's that's we're going good. Episode two or three. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, <laughs> um, coming back, coming back to the Redfield drugs. You see how how 
there's so much. In, I, I mean, each carpets, rug right? has its own each story. story, it's story and like, like, you know, again, that's that's why the symbolism, the the significance of the symbolism, the, the likely the eras it came from, like you just mentioned, pre Christianity, post Christianity. You know, well, most it's, of the patterns, sure. I mean, have survived similar to the Armenian folk songs that come to us from pre-Christian era, yeah. which thankfully Gomidas was able to record them. Mm -hmm. That's another that's another dialect, by the way. Um, as I was, uh, we were talking about in Armenian communication system, it's not only the 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 vocal uh, sounds that we make we talk it's not the verbs it's not the literature there are many forms of communication uh, talking is one writing is another carpet patterns is another of course uh, architecture is another dialect armenian songs is another armenian music is another it's it's almost armenian like armenian folk dance Armenian folk dance, oh, yeah. you know? Absolutely. It's absolutely. almost everything we did, we somehow figured out a way to tell a story. It doesn't matter, like you said, dancing, art, architecture, whatever it was, we always told a story in what we're doing. We're saying something. Yeah, we're, 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 we're giving a statement, a, statement, a we're message. We're sharing yeah. a wisdom with whoever is willing to take. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there are folk dancers that describe the famous horse of um, Sasun. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Sasun. Yeah. It's called Sasna Yeah. The dance called Sasna Yeah. And it's danced by men. And there are no steps taken. They only stand still. And they just go up and down. Yeah. They they mimic they kinda how like the horse they, does. Yeah, yeah, just, just kind of sideways. No, yeah, it's just a like a yeah. like okay. a yeah. And yeah. Once yeah. in a while, yeah. once in a while, one of the right right foot goes up and boom, it's the floor. Yeah, just like the horse does yeah. sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're they're describing the Sasnachar horse. The horse. And then um, there are the songs. There I, are. Arno has a question. He's asking what what did the letters S BV stand for. Okay. S, this is another misconception. Most of the people, they talk about the letter S, they resemble it to the Armenian letter D Duh. that stands with there, which means God. No, that has nothing. That symbol, that symbol predates Christianity, folks. Yeah. You want to believe it at, as it is there? Go ahead and believe it. It's the two wing of the Armenian Gerhaj. It's the half of the Gerhaj. It's also it also means the two opposing forces of, of the natural elements: earth, wind, I like fire, that. water. I like yeah. that. That's what it means. You see, you see the S symbol all over. Now take that S symbol and copy it. And if it's if it's vertical, the copy make it into a horizontal and put over it. It's a swastika. It's a swastika. What is the swastika? It's a sign of peace. Uh, Mike, yeah. In here, there is a there is a huge. Mike, take problem. off your mic. Go. I don't know if it's, uh, <laughs> if it's here. The, Our beautiful uh, assistant, Mike, right now. <laughs> uh, you see these rugs? No, all the way to the left. These are American uh, Indian. These are not Armenian. American uh. Indian. See if you find that there is a huge rug. Maybe we do that on the other segment, huh? Yeah. Yeah, it's going to take long. I mean, we'll the do. amount of rugs that are here that yeah, are... You might as well get familiarized with your inventory. <laughs> oh, Mike, <laughs> let's skip that. We okay. talk about that. Maybe, maybe you have the uh, poster I made sometime four years ago. I made a poster. I... Go to the list of the images. Let's talk about this as... Go, go... There, there. Which one? No, go up, go up, go up. There must be a poster that I described the Khanzoresk rug. You don't have that file. Was it one of the I, red was it one of the red ones? Yeah. 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 So scroll down. Scroll down. There should be they should be the, like the see. last like seven or eight images. There on the left. You just yeah, yeah this right one? there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there we no, go. No, above that. Above that. 
Oh, okay. Sorry. No, above that. This one right here. Yeah, there we okay. go. Yes. There. Okay, let me share this with everybody. Yeah, so this is yes. a really Logic. cool image, by the way. Okay, there, there we go. Go okay. ahead and read it. Now, in the okay, center, guys, you, you see the swastika. Uh, you guys, you know, we're not going to go over this. Uh, let's not go over but, this one by any, one. But anybody, go ahead and do do a screenshot. Yeah, we can share this. You can, we share, can this. share this. Yeah, yeah, yeah we'll, you can we'll share, share this, this on our on our uh, on our page. So when you see in on the carpets, there is a single wing. It looks like a hook, mm -hmm. and usually it's done on the borders of the rugs. And erroneously in the market, that single hook is called, believe it or not, running dog, which doesn't make any sense. Yeah, Again, it really it's doesn't. a falsification, it's a resemblance, a name given without any meaning into it. Then you see the double wing, which resembled the S, as you said, or the Armenian letter D, mm -hmm. which is the two elements. It can be, if it's, if it's horizontal, it can be two opposing earth, wind, or if it's vertical, it can be fire, water. Fire, water. That's the four. And then there is the eight. The eight, the eight is the two opposing forces of each element. The fire has two forces. It can be good or it can be bad. Same thing with other four elements. Yeah. And the list goes on. So that's what the S's are. We see so many of them. Okay? That's what I hope I answered. I don't believe it's the Armenian letter D. I believe it's the half of the, the two-winged swastika, the two-wing. There is four, there is six, there is eight, there is 12. Armenians have the most variety uh, various types of swastikas. We call it Gerhaj. And the, in this civilization, the earliest form of swastikas found in Armenian petroglyphs in Gehamasars, before which guys, 18,000 I mean, years or look, so. Seriously, anyway. I mean, seriously, if, I mean, I'm assuming everybody knows their history. That the swastika predates by thousands of years yeah. what happened in World War II. Yeah, like, it was like get, demonized. Get that, get that out of your mind. Yeah. Please, yeah. everybody, Please. get that yeah. out of your minds. That does not matter. Period. Okay. So before we continue, and, and I know we're kind of all over the place right now because we, you know, um, I, and I want to take some questions from the audience, and they have some amazing questions. By the way, Arno, I'm joking with you. It's not Windex. <laughs> <laughs> he asked, uh, how does he handle uh, and care? of the rugs <laughs> so bugs like tets uh don't get in between them and uh <laughs> can we cover that next time <laughs> I mean, there's a whole we can do a whole episode thing. on that I, okay. I i could tell you how you can remove each oh, stain listen uh, before, you can do that before anything Let's have him talk about the Armenian Rug Society. That's, that was my next. Yeah, question. let's let's. Well, we I know each other too well. The red. Yeah. Uh, let's let's conclude. No, no, no. Hold on, sure. hold on, hold on. Before, uh, here's the thing. We 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 have a lot of questions from audiences, and and I gotta scroll back to see what who's asking what. I I really want to mention about the Armenian Rug Society. I really want okay. you to yeah. talk about that, yeah, and we'll people. get back into it. Um. So, you know. Oh my Again, God, it's nine thirty, man. No, no, no! Don't worry about the time. <laughs> it's, not the time. it's not the time. The time. I, I, the time. I just want to be able to cover this because this is important, and it, this is an important society that, yeah, uh, you know, from meeting you and talking about it, uh, when we left here, this was about a month ago. I it, it kind of like I, you know, I don't know. I was just like, was man, we need to do something. Yeah, we need to impact. do something, you know. Yeah. It, it, and from what it used to be and what it. So my question to you is. Uh, what do you what can you tell us about the organization its history uh, ac uh accomplishments and what's what its do you goals. see its future yeah its goals yeah armenian rock society was founded in 1980 mm -hmm. by few 
men that had a vision and they were offended. Why they were offended? Because every single Armenian rock that they knew, uh, some of those uh, founding peers of Armenian rock society were dealers, Armenian dealers that came from a family of carpet making mm -hmm. families and they knew the history, they knew everything, yet in the market, the Armenian rugs were introduced and labeled as Turkish or at the best Caucasian. Really? That was it. They said, look, even some carpets that had Armenian Gregorian dates and Armenian inscriptions, Turkish and so on. So they came together, they said, look, we got to do something about this. And one of the uh, founding members was the son of Armenian hero, Garo Sasuni. Garo Sasuni was the, uh, I think he was the um, Varchabeder. Uh, he was the prime minister at the first Republic of Armenia. I believe he was, anyway, and he was a Fedai. His wife was the Armenian Red Cross founder. Mm -hmm. And uh, Viken Sasuni was his son. He was a real patriot and he knew the value of conserving and protecting the Armenian, Armenian culture. Yeah. Armenian carpets are major part of the uh, Armenian culture. And they formed Armenian Rock Society. Mm -hmm. uh, the other guy was uh, James Keshishian, his brother Harold Keshishian, which are the only carpet, uh, uh, carpet uh, business that they have, the organization in uh, Washington, D.C. And they were the only one who were allowed to enter White House, to care for White House's carpets. Anyway, when they founded that in 1980, First thing they did, they collected all those rugs, carpets, Armenian yeah. carpets that have inscriptions, complete, all of them. They said, we're going to print a catalog, we're going to take this collection, and they were antique. By the way, that Gohar carpet yeah. was displayed at that time. It was in there, it was borrowed, belonged to a private collection. And they took that collection from museum to museum in many places, all the way to Vienna. Mm -hmm. And they published a catalog called Kings, Merchants and Weavers, Armenian Rugs. That was the first publication. Since then, they did many other exhibits. Until 1990, uh, they, there was another... Uh, conference, symposium, and exhibit in Memphis, Tennessee. At that exhibit, all those founders were already pretty old. Uh, Vicky and Sassoni had already passed away. Yeah. They, uh, there was no young generation left there. And Mark Keshishian said, he called me Cozy, <laughs> my last names. It uh, seems person. fitting. That's yeah. what he called yeah. me. He said, listen, we're getting old in Washington, D.C. That's where was the um, headquarters. He said, we're not going to be able to continue this. You have to take the society to West Coast. At that meeting, the majority of Californians that were there were from the Bay Area. Yeah. Joseph Bezjan, Garbitz Bagdasarian, uh, and one of the founders of the, uh, the Armenian Rock Society, Lemiel Amirian's daughter, Lorraine, was there. Uh, so there were four over there, and there was only one from Southern California that was me. So we said, look, we can take it to San Francisco. So it was headquarters were moved in 1990s to San Francisco. Uh, from 1990 to 1914 was housed in in for 2000. Yeah, 2014. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> I was gonna say <laughs> we're we, we, we went back 1914. Yeah. Yeah. No, 2014. 2014. That's what you meant. Yeah. 
I'm getting tired, I think. I'm yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, anyway. you know, it's 9.30, but, but, but they, you know, they they told us to tell you it's only 8 p.m., so. Oh, anyway. are they Are they watching? From like, <laughs> anyway, Hawaii? Connor doesn't want us to end. Abiding in truth, I, I, I don't know your name, but thank you. Uh, he said it's only 8 p.m., so. Anyway, uh, in 19, well, since then we did a huge exhibit and another publication in um, in San Francisco called Passages, mm -hmm. another catalog. But during all this time, we were also focused on Armenia. Since Armenia became independent from 1992, we want to bring back the old tradition of Armenian carpet making, the traditional way, back into the Armenian culture. Because when Armenia became sovietized that tradition ceased to exist practically the communists during the communist era it was illegal to do private business and they collected all those weavers they said if you want to do weaving you have to come to the workshop and work from here yeah. so they were producing so, 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 from so 100 they, to 150 so they were like designated areas yes basically. factories like, yeah, and yeah, it's called yeah, high gorg yeah, there were there yeah. were branches all over armenia in yeah. ijevan in yerevan all over yeah. and they were factories and the women they were not free to weave as they felt as the traditional this is what i collect here i collect everything that are pre-soviet era why because the execution of the patterns are so free. It's not confined. Yeah, it's it's not like mechanical, like a robot. Communism. This homo, yeah, homogenic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Communism. Exactly. <laughs> and what they did, they produced almost like a mass production. Yeah. And really ugly, really ugly, has no soul. Wrong colors, wrong uh, carpet composition totally wrong anyway so in order to revive the old tradition Armenian Rock Society concentrated in Armenia we did so many uh, publications from Armenia we also started um, initiation we initiated a program with one of the uh, members who was the uh, vice president of Armenian Right Society, Levon Derbedrosian, in Armenia, he opened he opened a boutique hotel slash museum slash restaurant. Wait, did you say Levon Derbedrosian? Yeah. Yes, has nothing to do with yeah. the. Oh, okay, not that okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I figured it wasn't do. him. I figured I, it I wasn't just, him. I just want to clarify yeah, that. Yeah, 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 Thank yeah, you. No, yeah. Yeah, yeah <laughs> that's all it president. is. No, 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 okay, no. Okay. <laughs> but Levon, my friend, our former vice president, okay. was is a beautiful okay. soul, beautiful heart. Anyway, with him in Armenia and with the support of Armenian Rock Society, we we started a program called Adopt a Loom. What we did, we trained like four to eight girls to learn the fundamentals of carpet weaving the traditional way, we provided small looms mm -hmm. and we provide the necessary materials for these girls to go from village to village, different parts of Armenia, the remote villages, and teach the kids how to weave the traditional way. So that program was called Adopt a Loom. I have uh, some samples right there, Mira. Right there, we have oh the small ones. Yeah, yeah. For example, we we tell them, we tell the them how to draw. Now this is this is that red deer of Armenian highland. Uh, this is a depiction on a port on a on a. This is a deer that is depicted on. A, a, uh, 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 Batger on petroglyph, okay? Mike, you're blacking the, my view. No, yeah, kidding. these are... Uh, <laughs> oh, you're a picky guy, bro. Uh, yeah, these are... 
Yeah. No, upside no, down. No, upside down. The, upside other way, down. the other way. The other way. Yeah. No, the other way. F flip it. There you go. Yeah, yeah. This is, if you come back, it says, yeah. This is for the adopter loom. These are small rugs that were woven by those children that they learned how to weave. So that's the program. That's what we do. Okay. And the funds, the, the members, uh, the board of directors, everybody in the Armenian Rock Society, we are volunteers. We don't we don't get paid. Yeah. In fact, it costs us a lot of money you know, to be members. If I can if I can add to that, listen, uh not, not, yeah, thank you. Um can I have a chocolate? <laughs> thank you. Absolutely. I'm also I swear host. to God, this is I also want some wine if you don't this mind. This is awesome. <laughs> Mike is so Wow. Um, you know, some uh, here's the thing. A lot of people when when you do something and, and and for example this podcast, we have friends who do other podcasts, Wise Nuts. I always got to give a shout out a uh, shout out to wow. them. You know, people when you do something, it's not always about money. It is about you know, a cause. People think that, you know, um, like you said, the rug society or whatever we do or other people, it is not It is not just about making profit. It is about educating. It is about, um, you know, uh, helping people out. So that's what really frustrates me most of the time that every time, and, and it's a big problem in our culture, every time we do something, automatically people are like oh they're making money somehow and this is what needs to change like you said you put your own money into it right your own your expenses to make this happen to teach the children this and that and and this is what we need to keep concentrating on is making sure that we continue to do this whatever you know platform it is podcast rug whatever that's my opinion so, you know, there is a Armenian saying. It says, "Maha merne mek mahina martu korsne mist an mah." The debt belongs to us, and we belong to that. The work that we leave behind is immortal. After all, how a person becomes immortal? Whoa. The the, I'm trying to share a, it to Armenia. A person becomes immortal if after he passes, after he's gone, he, his name or his life gets celebrated for many years to come. As long as you remember that person, that person is not dead in your mind. Oh, yeah, yeah I believe in that. So, uh, yeah. So what am I saying? The work that we leave behind, that's how people remember us. Uh, I don't know. Some materialistic people might think that way. Or if they say yeah. that, hey, I wonder how much money he's getting by doing this. Probably in their mind, that's how what would they do. But don't judge. Yeah. Everybody doesn't think that way. I don't. I don't drive a luxurious car. I much rather drive a used. I buy a five-year-old car. The rest of the money I much rather invest and save. Carpets that our ancestors wove that are instinct stopped in God. 1918, 1920s, 19 early latest early 30s ceased to exist this car which was among us for millennia haraj yeah. haraj there's rugs in there that probably have five times more value than any mercedes on this planet yes but i that's it right there in that that's corner, all I gotta there's say. a white canvas you see that white canvas yeah. the tallest yeah. rug that's a 17th century dragon rug half of it I paid Armin a leg to save that, and I bought it from a Turk, by the way. 
You know, speaking of that, and I'm going to take your question away, and I want to, like, how can a non-professional, someone like, a, you know, regular folks like us, uh, our audience, identify original Armenian carpets or rugs? So what, what, what should what we, would look, we for? look for? Yeah. yeah. Well, here is the thing. I, I, I get that question a lot, by the way. A lot. Uh, me, we discussed this. Armenian carpets are monumental. They're not ornamental. Mm-hmm. When we talk about Armenian rugs, when we say Armenian rug... They're not just for design. Uh, well, 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 somewhat. Somewhat. Yeah. Somewhat. A professional can tell by looking at the techniques, the weaves, the knots, how it's tied, what kind of weft is used. It's There is a feel. Believe it or not, every rug has a soul. Then it, it talks to me. You have a... You have a wine connoisseur without seeing the bottle sips and tells you 1991. Yeah. Claude Dubois, yeah. whatever, 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 whatever. Yeah. There's that. But also there is a, um, if, if we're going to make it easy, consider most, almost all geometric the pattern, I mean, geometric patterns that are abstract. The birthplace was Armenia. Probably later on, other cultures adopted that and mimicked that or altered that and came up. But Armenians almost always used those geometric patterns that meant something to them, that they were uh, abstract symbology. Okay, that's, that's one of the main things. Which is which is the the the, the eight um, the eight right yeah. the there's yes. the eight the four the two mm-hmm. the, the two yeah the, the multiples power of two, of two. Yeah. Yeah. right those but that doesn't mean every single rug you see out there that are for sale in IKEA or somewhere else that has <laughs> those you would say oh Armenian yeah it could be Pakistani or Chinese or you know, which they've yeah, copied mimicking, basically yeah, mimicking mimicking yeah. Yeah. yeah as similar to other contributions that Armenian culture gave to the world, this was another one. But what I collect, and that's another question, what's the collectible? Well, to me, collectible is the ones that were made for their own use, not for commercial purpose. Now, typically, is that what you look find and and when you do trace these things how do you trace these things you know well, like what do you what is what is it what is what's the first thing you look for when let's say you you want to find a rug that let's say is 150 200 years old or you find out that there's an individual or individuals that may have purchased it at some date and it got passed along and passed along because these things probably changed hands so many times okay where we're, we're like where does your investigation in the, begin in carpet industry the news travels very fast. <laughs> okay. Okay. And believe me, those dealers for every collector, there are probably 100 dealers that are willing to sell something to that collector. Yeah. Okay. So it's a very big uh, asset to know a collector that buys certain things. You go to Istanbul, mm-hmm. to the bazaar, mm-hmm. iterate my name, they know me. You go to Yerevan, go to uh, that um, but, uh, vernissage, 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 yeah. Uh, or any carpet store. Sure. Tell them. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. We know each other yeah. and we know who likes what. And they know what I buy. From France, from a Persian guy, I purchased the oldest, maybe the only existing uh, Shushi pure silk rug that is inscribed and dated 1886. I never seen another one like it. This guy, I don't know, I never met him. He finds me, he says, look what I have. You want, you want this? Of course I want it. 
So uh, it's a small world, but it's with a lot of information floating. A lot around. of information yeah. going around. A yeah. lot. Yeah. That's how. And do I sell them eventually? Well, yes. What, when I sell them, when I sell, if I have a rug and I find another one that is similar, I don't let it just go. Yeah. I have people that also collectors that they don't have one like that. I'll tell them, look, I got one. You want this? You better take this. And I sell to immediate friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's what Armenian society yeah. does. Yeah, yeah. We sell internally, in case, internally. internally. Yeah. What if we there is a an exhibit we are gonna organize and we need that specific rug? Well, they um, provide it, and in our catalogs we always give credit from to who's, the owner, yeah, to the whoever owner the owner is, yeah, or the purchaser, right. yeah. So going back to Armenian rug society again. Since nineteen, uh, since twenty fourteen, uh, the headquarters was moved here to LA. I was the president. Gevork Nazarian became the secretary. By the way, wait, what? Uh, I didn't even our, know our, that. Our, our hold on, great really? friend <laughs> Gevork. Wait, what are you guys holding out on me for? Really, Gevork's Gevork's the secretary of this? Yeah, he was the secretary, <laughs> and we were publishing. Uh, Hi, Gevork. <laughs> We were uh, we were publishing actually he uh, Kevork was publishing a, a newsletter. We had a newsletter and we would send it via snail mail. Snail mail. Yeah. Wow. Are you kidding hard me? Hard copy of uh, hard copy of newsletters about Armenian rugs. But uh, Kevork left to Armenia to get his doctorate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He stayed there. Uh, I have few helpers here, but I don't have any professional so right now uh, other members they got really retired some of them from Midwest and East Coast passed away we need people we need young generation we need the writers yeah those of you people, our audience does anyone want to help well you want to uh, join help uh, by the way uh, Haraj, i want to say uh hilda avanisian says oh. hello Haraj. we love you harry and hilda i'm assuming they're friends of yours hilda. oh oh, oh, oh. Uh -huh. hi hilda <laughs> hi harry <laughs> um, harry is kevorkian hilda is avanisian uh, yeah now before we continue i mean we we are almost hitting our three hour mark um that's I, a lot yeah um that's, but i want to take some questions so anybody in yeah, the audience questions if you guys have questions in the audience please type it right now we'll go ahead and and read it for for Haraj and he can answer them for you uh we, obviously we kind of had a you know structure yeah, but, but whatever doesn't matter we're, we're it's all about whatever. you know talking about the topic it's, it's a, conversation. a conversation these are what live shows are about and um you know we we covered a lot so any of you who have questions, please uh, go ahead and ask right now. Um, trying to scroll back. Oh, you know what? There was a question someone asked, and I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not going to scroll that far back. But any connection with with our weaving patterns with Native Americans? Yes. Oh, where's I, where? did, I didn't send you that uh, image. That's a great question. There is a, there is a small there is a small. Uh, Okay. See, I don't know which image that is, but I don't think I have it. Okay. Up until 1870s, Native Americans wove carpets. Only color differences were in horizontal, different colors, in horizontal lines. There were no other patterns. Okay. We... Um, we designate those types as first phase. The, the, the Native American carpets went through three different phases. The first phase was all those Native American rugs that has only horizontal lines. The second phase is when they discovered the technique how to weave vertical lines with separate colors without any sleet. I'm talking highly technical now yeah. in weave. 
okay? The third phase, they discovered how to make an angle color separation. Once we combine, once you can combine the horizontal, vertical, and angular line, you can come up with any pattern you want. At that time, in 1880s, during the uh, Victorian era, carpets was really popular in the West. And that coincided with Hamidian massacres and Armenian dealers, merchants, started coming to America and bringing those carpets and selling them hose. At that time, uh, almost all carpet dealers were Armenians. Okay. And there was not enough supply for the high demand. There was James B. Moore, trader, fur trader, actually, who, who really worked with the Native Americans. He would buy, uh, he would trade fur for that. Then he noticed that there is this high demand for carpets with geometric patterns. And he noticed what, he knew what the Native Americans would weave. He took an Armenian rug, took it to the native Navajo tribe, said, if you can do this pattern, I trade you anything you can do. After few, after few uh, tests, they made one. So I had he he took the Armenian carpet. The woman, the Native American woman, hold the other carpet. They made a photo. They made that into a pamphlet, and they started marketing. That was the beginning of the southwestern pattern that we see now in New Mexico, Arizona, Nevada, all those places. Oh my God. All these Native American patterns are, are influenced from Armenian carpets. They were mimicking, mm -hmm. they were copying what was popular back then. And I have a copy on our next segment. I'll, I'll send you the file, you can see it. Yeah, we can get into I that. I have a copy, yeah, yeah. I have a copy that. of it. I can even uh, provide some samples. I have a rug uh, that is yes. a huge swastika. We'll talk about that. So yes, southwestern pattern is highly influenced by Armenian carpets. There you go, Connor. That that hopefully that answers your question. Wow. Uh, that that was what Connor was asking. Was you know the 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 whole patterns oh, they introducing wow. yeah. to the Native Indian. Um, Edgar, I, it, well, I think we answered this question. Uh, Edgar was asking, what are some of the ingredients used to make these colors? I think we covered that already, which yes, was... the red, uh, unfortunately, mid-19th century, the uh, Vortangarmir became almost instinct because uh, those areas that Vortangarmir, Armenian ended Koshnil was Turkey. growing, not only end up in Turkey, yeah. also they became... Uh, um, uh, posture lands. Yeah. Oh, like pr protected? Posture lands for for the uh, cows to graze. Yeah, okay. And it declined tremendously. Uh, but recently, again, Levon Derbedrosian purchased a huge parcel and uh, also it's the government called. made that area designated for the Vortangar to come back. But since it went down for the red Armenian use, Armenians use the root of a plant called madder. There is a plant that has a root that has also a red sap. We extract the dye from it. All these you see is extracted from madder plant. In Armenian, they call it doron. Doroni armad. So those are the reds, the saffron, uh, is the yellow or the antaram? There is a wild flowers, uh, pomegranate uh, skin. Uh, really, they they use that. Oh yeah, yeah really. Anyway, from army green yeah. to dark brown, uh, pomegranate skin, walnut husk, uh, onion skin. Uh, onion skin. I mean. I mean you know what, what Easter how time is yeah a lot of people a lot of people don't know like the uh, the the red onion the the peel of it 
that's what a lot of people my mom they, she that's what she uses to to dye the eggs with um so all natural dyes are the local plants from local armenian plants in fact armenia has 275 indigenous plants in Armenian highland that grows nowhere else, that have highly medicinal values. And currently there are companies um, from the United States doing studies in those uh, plants. Anyway, that's another yeah. subject. Yeah. Yes. Haraj, we have Sona Hosepian asking, uh, well, she says, hello, Haraj, what is, uh, what is something specific about rugs from Artakh? I don't know what she means. I like, think she's there, asking, is like, is there a certain is there pattern? Is there or, something or, different from rugs that are made from the Artsakh region throughout history than anywhere else? No, we already uh, discussed that. Um, all Armenian rugs are speaking the same language in a different dialect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, The characteristics are different. For example, uh, let's say in Artsakh rugs, almost all Artsakh rugs, if you flip the back, look at the weave, it has a ridge. In other words, to make the, uh, I'm talking, I have to talk this technical. Sure, sure. The double loop that Armenians do, that double loops, one of them is high, one of them is low. So the, so the technique's a little bit different. The technique yeah. is different. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they also, the side court salvage, uh, Artsakh carpets, almost all of them are either two or three cords. Now, different regions, for example, Lori is only one, or uh, further south is different. So those are the minor details that the highly trained eye can only tell the difference. Yeah. And that's how we tell. Uh, recently, we made a, I offered a recognition. I said, post your rug, I'll tell you how old it is and where it's from. <laughs> well, post a picture. You know, we have a we have a question. That's awesome. Uh, That's so that cool. It's asking: Will Haraj consider starting an Armenian rug history classes? I've done. I don't that. know who's funding from this. From 1990, <laughs> from 1990 to 1999, uh, there is a local here, Northridge uh, University. This oh, is Josefina, Sisan. by the way, asking Sisan, this question. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There was, uh, there is an Armenian studies. So I was the only one who uh, introduced uh, the like course I, yeah. for nine years. I lectured. I, uh, I did that. Yeah. But uh, hopefully, if I get enough help, we do these kind of segments. We do yeah. it, uh, you know, virtual classes. We Guys, can if, do any that. if anybody's been touched or is interested in helping in any way, shape, or form, yeah, by the way, out. seriously, uh, reach out. On, reach yeah, Mike. you can find Shahad on can, his uh, Facebook. I can also, I can also plug in our website. Yeah, Armenian absolutely. Rock Society. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. ArmenianRugsSociety.org. We're not sponsored by anybody, so yeah, you can plug we're, whatever yeah, you we're, want. Yeah, we're not, <laughs> then, uh, if not you go to program. the last file, it's our logo. The last file in uh, the, that I sent, I think it's the last one. Um, which, which one? Yeah, very uh, Vercina. All, all the way, all, all the, the way. There, there we go. This one. one. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Give me a second, guys. I will share this with all of okay. you. Okay. Let's go. Go yeah. And now, if you type this, ArmenianRugsSociety.org, it can be dot com, whatever. It'll pull it up. It, it yeah, will pull it, it will, up. Pull, it will pull okay. it up. Just I, Google Armenian Rug Society. Yeah, you'll find it. You'll find uh, it. Hiraj, and we you have can a, contact me through there. Yeah, so you can, again, Facebook, uh, just reach out to Haraj. Just search for him, uh, for his he, name. Or, he is a yeah. very friendly human being, guys. Yeah, so um, <laughs> we very. have a question from, let's see here, from Caroline uh, Talar. She's asking, connection between comitas and carpets. Oh. That that we 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 you, we kind of covered it. Uh, Carol, well, well, Carol, you touched my soft yeah, spot. Yeah, my favorite hero. Unfortunately, if there is an Armenian saint, I'll designate Gomidas. Gomidas revived and told us who Armenian people are. Until what Gomidas did, the only so-called history of Armenia or Armenian history, what we knew was about 
kings, queens, kings, queens. wars, mm -hmm. and church. Mm -hmm. We didn't know anything about the laymen, the regular people, the, the people that really made what Armenian culture is until Gomidas, through his recording of the songs, which are the songs that, that really tell the story of Armenian people. Gomidas, when he was, after the massacres, when he passed away, he was, he was almost mute. He didn't talk for quite some time. Then as soon as he, he came back to life, the first question he said, where is my rugs and my, <laughs> yeah, where are I my it. carpets? I love it. And my notes. What happened to my carpets and my notes? Gomidas knew exactly the value of Armenian folk art. Yeah. He was the people man, actually. He didn't care about the royalty and all that. He was he was after people. And his he was born in Kutahia. His mother was a carpet weaver. His mother had a carpet, which Gomidas always had it with him all his life. In fact, there, is a, uh, there are several paintings, Gomidas laying under a tree on the carpet. That's his mother's carpet. And that carpet, if you ever go to Armenia, is housed in Gomidas Museum in Yerevan. Go see it. I did a post on that. I did post that, by the way, on my Facebook. I'll post it again. Ah. Gomidas, not only Armenian carpets, he always followed the folk art. The folk art is the genuine, um, the genuine mirror of how people lived, what people, the regular people are. The fine art, anybody can, go to seven yeah. years uh, to study and become and, an artist. And, and with, with any culture. With it's any culture. Thing. It's the same thing, you're and right. And that's yeah. formed. Yeah. But folk art that you learned from your grandmother and she learned from her mother and grandmother and passed from generation to generation. Those women that didn't know how to read and write and they wove these, these fabulous carpets. They knew how to compose patterns that are so harmonious and put together 12 colors. Try to wear something with three colors. You become a clown. <laughs> How did these women coordinate those 12 colors to make into this fantastic piece of art that speaks to you, that radiates energy to you? Yeah. Really? Uh, yeah, no, yeah. You so, can't even look at artwork these days or paintings that have more than three or four colors. That's it. Like You can't. Um, I next hope I answered your question, <laughs> yeah. Carol. I'm sorry I get carried away. <laughs> Very passionate way. But you yeah. hit a soft spot. Yeah. Next question I have from, um, let's see here, Guyana. It says, uh, hello, Mr. Raj. Like in fairy tales of Anahid, are there some Armenian carpets with hidden messages weaved in them you've encountered? Yes, every single one of them. Oof. But <laughs> oof, every single rug has a secret message in it, if we can read it. Unfortunately, we lost that this dialect of our language, of rich Armenian language had many dialects. I'm trying to learn as much as I can, as much as I can. And believe me, 40 years of research is not enough. It takes probably generations. I need people the, from younger generation to take the torch from my hand and carry it to the second and third generation. By the way, I, I want to mention that Josefina is volunteering to help you. Where does she? Anyway, uh, contact um, Yeah, <laughs> Josefina, contact Facebook. Contact Connect. Connect. Yeah. Yeah. Please. <laughs> 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 uh, 
love and, it. And, so and, excited. and I believe there's also Asrik uh, Kamalian who is uh, Asrik Kamalian is a yeah, singer. She's talking about a uh, Armenian uh, children's or is it Armenian children's writer with a book about Armenian carpets coming. So she wants to reach out to you about that. So I'm not sure what that is, but <laughs> reach out to uh, okay. Haraj directly. I'm just reading all the comments. So Josefina. Find um, me in Facebook. Yeah. Uh, that's the best way. Uh, I don't have. Oh, uh, here's a good question. Uh, is the color here? Let me bring this up to the screen. It says, is the color green exclusive to Armenian weave versus neighboring Muslim weavers? No, not exclusive. Green is general. Green uh, all by itself uh, derived from pomegranate uh, pomegranate skin is not that pistachio that strong green it's it's kind of dull more, more like a military green but the the true that like uh, an olive olive maybe? green yeah. yeah yeah but the islamic green that true green is actually derived from indigo and saffron two two colors mixed, yeah Huh. It's it's not uh, exclusive to Armenians. Okay, so uh, there goes. Uh, I hope that um, that answers your question. Uh, Josefina has. Uh, she wants to know is what is your favorite rug? Ask if you have brothers and sisters. Ask your mother, who's her favorite <laughs> child? Morat <laughs> Kapal. It's a good way to respond to it, though. I love I mean, it. It really I love is. It. It's an amazing way to respond to it. <laughs> Straight to the mom. How do you how do you say no to all of this? Oh my god. Yeah, I no. mean there's a there's a story. As we here. said, as we said, yeah. each piece from each region represents a bit yeah. of pieces of our culture. Yeah, about history, about I mean, our culture, yeah. All together do something. I alone cannot do one carpet alone doesn't do anything. I need people, you know. Armenians are in all over the world. In any diasporan community, believe it or not, they wove rugs. You see, this rug was made, woven here in yeah. 1920s in the United States. Oh, yeah. By an orphan. And it's dedicated to the. Uh, we're going to talk States about America. this. Yeah, we're, we're going to talk, talk about, about this. Yeah, in the but what future. I'm there saying any way is. Turn the camera around really quick so they can see it. But I'm, uh, yeah, you can turn it around or you can uh, just, show the just book. Turn the, just turn the uh, thing around. You can yeah. show the book if you like. If you guys see that right there. You guys see it? Uh, Mira, there's the book here. It's published. Yeah. 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 It's good. Yeah. yeah. I mean, look, it looks like there's a George Washington right in the middle. Yeah. So, while this is happening, I'm going to free flow here. <laughs> um, we're bringing out some amazing artifacts and, and so we're, we're samples. Oh, there we go. Yeah. That's yeah what's so, on the that, wall, that's what's that's on what's the wall, on guys. Wall. Yeah. Said yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Anyway. Um, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, yeah. Mira, would you... Cameraman, server, <laughs> rug boy. Yeah. yeah. Um, what, uh, what I was saying, uh, the Armenian culture is so rich, so rich. You cannot really... Uh, just like the carpet, Armenian carpet represents the to Armenian culture in its totality. You're not looking at a single line or a single color. Yeah. You have many lines that form something yeah. with many different colors. That's what we are. Your talent, his talent, the young generation, diasporan uh, people from different communities of diaspora, we each represent one thing in this carpet. Yeah. We all together, it takes the effort of all of us to make this carpet. That's how it is. Yeah. I alone, I cannot do anything. I can, I can None offer. Of can. None it's of almost like the same exactly. saying. It takes a village, you know. It takes a yes. village, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. Josephine says, "Tell him it's Josephina from AJB." Not sure what that means. Okay. 
Okay, I know, I know who is Josefina. Hi, All Josefina. Right. All right. Hi. <laughs> uh, is somebody makes what's this a uh, um, I don't, let's see, what's the next question here? Uh, are the eight pointed symbols on the carpets exclusive Armenian? All right. I think we addressed that. Yeah, we addressed yeah. that, but just we in said, case, yeah. Okay, we said. Albert what? Ohanian is asking that Albert, question. Yes. Albert. You know that the the suffix utyun only makes sense in Armenian, in Armenian, Armenian yeah. language. Yeah, utyun. And if we go to uh, the same concept, utyun or haverjutyun, eternity, eternal harutyun. I mean, uh, anything, any anything, verb, anything, yeah. add utyun, yeah. Yeah. Any, word, any verb. Yeah. Add utyun, yeah, and that's it. And one of the symbols of haverjutyun is on petroglyphs, which is the swastika. Now, find me anything older than that that reflects the eight-pointed star or the eight or utyun. Go ahead and find me. Does that answer your question, Albert? <laughs> Confidently. Um, let's see. Um, oh, thank you. We, we're getting a lot of praises saying thank you. Wow. Uh, great answer. Um, we have Connor. Connor, are you Armenian? Uh, because Connor Anderson, uh, this is podcast is spectacular. Andersonian? Thank you. A Andersonian? I don't Andersonian? know. I think he's just using an alias. Uh, Diana Hovanisian says, Haras John Barev, thank oh, you for the great Diana, talk. Diana, I love you. <laughs> She's one of my students from Armenia. Diana, Diana we love you because Haras loves you. Yes, so. Diana Kergumemkez, Garot Sazem Shad. Diana is the girl who came from Armenia to weave the silk rug and we did a ceremony on our next segment, I'll tell you. Okay. The rug cutting ceremony. Diana Bacikner, Kergumim Hampurner. We have Viken Babkenyan, sorry, Viken Babkenyan, my eyes, I need glasses, is saying Hrach's passion is radiating all the way to Australia. We've got some Aussies in here. All right. Aussie, Aussie, Who, what's his, Popkin? Uh, Viken, Viken. yeah. Hi, Viken. Um, I miss you. Viken was here. Oh, you know him? Us. I know oh, him. awesome, he, awesome. He's an author. He's an author and great guy. Amazing. Great guy. He He's an independent researcher who did a lot of discoveries how Australia was involved with um, Armenian genocide and so forth, so on. Look for his last name. And do a Google search. Look up uh, for his, uh, yeah. uh, for his, um, for his. Books. I think we just have the next episode. Yeah, we <laughs> yeah, yeah. weekend is definitely. Uh, yeah, weekend. Yeah, you yeah, need yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, that's an interesting topic. Yeah, yeah. weekend. That's you need to reach out to us. Yeah. 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 Uh, Med uh, yeah. pod at Med reach, yeah, reach out to us. Please reach out to us. Let's see what else. Um, uh, I'm trying to go through. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to go through all the comments. If we uh, miss anything, I'll uh, I'll write it. Uh, Diana says yes. Haras John, me too. Miss you very much. Um, let's see here. Uh, how often did Armenians use salt bags? This is. Uh, oh, we're going. You know what, uh, Mira? Do we have a salt bag here? Right there. There's one. Oh, salt bag. Is that what that is? Yeah. Salt, by the way, there are many minerals. What's her name? His name? Vic. What's her or, her, or his oh, name? Oh, this is, uh, you know what? They Who's don't have a, the they don't have a just name. An alias? It just says, it's an alias. It says SSZ. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know who. Okay. S -S if you want to share your name, SSZ, I don't know who you are. Per. Uh, by the way, in in the mineral count in Hagarako. It looks like a bottle. Yeah. It does. They used salt bags always woven from lamb's wool. Why? 
because lamb's wool is by its nature an insulator. It doesn't allow humidity to go through it. It absorbs itself and the salt stays dry. And you cannot find another culture besides Armenian culture that that has, if you've seen those other... My beautiful assistant. <laughs> if you've seen those other, uh, those other salt containers, salt containers that look like uh, made, uh, made of clay. Okay, what I want to say is the edible salt, the table salt is originally also called Armenian salt by the way. And if you look in our etymology, in our uh, languages, look for the term ag. And all those words that are, uh, that have the suffix or the prefix with the syllable ag. Or it can be also the, the, the g sound eventually in Latin was Uh, replaced by L, Ag or Al or Sal. So Ag originally was used by Armenians and it was so valuable, by the way, uh, Al or Ag or Sal eventually became so valuable that were, people were using as a, as a uh, bartering object. Yeah. Uh, Hence yeah. the name salary. Wait, what? <laughs> really? Yeah, we can go on. Uh, <laughs> really? Yeah. Al sal ag, al sal salary. People were being paid by sacks of salt yeah. for their wage. Hence the term salary. Salary. Yeah, we have many, many Armenian. Uh, and, and look in the etymology. That itself, it can take about four hours of pet podcast. Just about the Armenian uh, Well, we're yeah, pretty yeah, close. Etym we're etym three and a half hours. Yeah, so. etymology uh, is a very fascinating topic oh, yeah. from where from where certain words come from and yeah. how they're derived. There's a history. Oh, yeah, history absolutely there. there is. Absolutely um, there is. Let's see. Uh, you want to keep going? I mean, people are asking If questions. There are questions. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't want to... Uh, we have a question from Josephine again saying, has the Armenian eternity sign been used in rugs? Uh, it's all over the Everywhere. place. Yeah. It's all over. Every single one has. Uh, Just and, a different form. And, and different, form. A different form. By form, the way, yeah. Josephine, the only, so many variations of the eternity sign you see, it's in Armenian culture. Hindu, Indians use it. Tibetans use it. Chinese mm -hmm. use it. They all use it. But... Only Armenians have so many different variety of them and continuously have been used in Armenia from petroglyphs from prehistoric time until today. It's the only sign that used continuously from prehistoric times from petroglyphs until today. The Armenian eternity. So let that sink in, guys. Yeah, if that let doesn't, that if sink doesn't in. Tell, yeah. If that doesn't tell you that, you know. I mean, we're getting some praises. Uh, uh, Stephanie, who is saying he is so informative, I could listen to him all night. Well, we've got Beautiful, more. So. We've got more episodes yeah, coming with him. More, uh, yeah, yeah. Follow. Uh, believe me, folks. These guys are doing great work, and they're getting out of their way to do this. They're, you know what. Mike, we're not works. making any money. We're not making any money of this, guys. This <laughs> Look, is, this is awesome. Go to their website, order some of their <laughs> beautiful, beautiful <laughs> sculptures. You know, you will be helping. You will be helping for future oh podcasts like the one what oh, we're doing. Man. Really, I received the gift from them, and I'm I'm so honored. I'm humbled. Thank you. Thank They you have for taking beautiful the gift. those Armenian heroes uh, statues. <laughs> Go ahead and order. Go ahead and order. <laughs> Believe me, every one of them is numbered. Oh, and it's part amazing. of our history. Yeah. Part of our history. And every time you look at that that statue, 
remember this episode and what you are contributing <laughs> to. Uh, I know it seems like I'm not paying. I am. I'm trying to monitor all the comments and <laughs> pay attention to everybody. Uh, we have uh, Nina. Let's see. Let's put her comment up on the screen. Nina Minasian asking, uh, could you please talk about the Pazidic carpet? Is that pronounced Lina, right? Paz Lina Minasian? Yeah. Lina, Nina. Nina Minasian. Nina Minasian. Is she... Nina Minasian. Apparently, I, I don't know. Uh, Nina, are you, are you guys know okay, her? Okay, anyway, um, I might know her. Anyway, okay. what's the question again? She's asking, can you please talk about the Pazidic carpet? Is that We uh, talked the Basric rug. We oh, Pazric? Yeah. Basric? Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm the right, Basric right. rug. Yeah. We talked about it so much. If there is a specific question about the Pazric rug, go ahead and ask me and I'll answer. But we did cover. We talked like half an hour okay. about it. So, Nina, John, please... Yeah, rewind re back re or yeah, watch it yeah, again yeah. We, we talked did, we about did it yeah. yeah um i let's see here i'm trying to catch up of there all the comments but um we're about three and a half hours in i know everybody wants us to continue um uh, let's do another segment you guys are yeah, tired look no 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 let's do this let's, i can go all day all night i can go i'm i'm I, has, this is my listen why don't we do this? If a lot of the viewers and even people who are going to watch this on on recorded audio or recorded video, ask us questions, send us questions. Yeah, we'll make sure we get this answered for you. Yeah. So, so I want to mention idea, that. Idea, Mike. I agree. Okay. Yeah. You know. So what? I just put it up on the screen, guys. We have a lot of people who reach out to us uh, through our podcast, uh, and the email is pod pod at medheadosnet.com. You have questions send it to us we what we do is if if we can answer the question for you we do directly if not yeah. we contact like we contact the, historian, the historians the and whatnot. it's yeah. Gevork, uh or vahan or anybody else that yeah. we work with uh in this case it would be head out so we will answer the question for you directly so don't be shy you can Please. also you can also Please. contact us through instagram which is uh at medheadosnet even on facebook Again, we are very. We respond right away. We're, we're friendly. Yeah, we're friendly. we're friendly. We don't bite. We so don't bite. reach out Just to ask us. Ask questions. We will get um, you the questions. Um, seriously, anytime, anytime about any topic we talk about. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but yeah. So I mean, you and know, for, I, and 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 order a few statues, please. <laughs> <laughs> You know, speaking of the statues, I'm I'm glad you're plugging us, but I want to let everybody know that. Again, we, we donate a portion of these statues to miasin.org. Um, and we have so many amazing things coming up. I, I can't even announce them right now because it's it's just in, it's so premature. But the things that are coming up that are we are going to be doing in Armenia this coming summer, hopefully, if everything works out, you guys are going to be. And I hope everybody can join us. But there's a lot of stuff happening. And, and what we do is, this isn't about, you know, the sculptures that we sell. This isn't about money. Um, it's about our culture, guys. I, it's I, about our heritage. I, I am blessed with what I do in my personal life. And uh, as Mike, what we do with these sculptures, every penny that comes in besides donating to miasin.org, we put it back into the projects that we're working on. So go ahead, go to medheadosnet.com and get those sculptures we're going to be doing our yearly end payout to miasin.org if you guys don't know about miasin.org um they you know help out uh, they they basically help all the soldiers from the war uh yeah, the, the wounded, displaced like families the, besides that they also work with um helping out the families the families yeah. they also they also uh help with i forget the other uh organization they work with i apologize but all the uh, equipment for the soldiers that are on the border of Armenia and, mm -hmm. and so-called Azerbaijan now. But, you know, so there's a lot involved. And again, Hadash, thank you for plugging us. <laughs> we usually do no, it at the I end mean, of the show. This is something um, usually, usually you guys don't talk about, but here, we don't. that's what's making this possible, yeah. you know? Yeah, really, yeah. really. Sometimes we don't, but uh, that's what um, this making possible. Couple, yeah. couple of things I yeah. want to mention. So, as far as like I said, this is kind of like a general uh, uh, 
uh, coverage we did of the Armenian Brogs next time we we have a live which will be probably sometime in January um, or February depending on how our, all of our schedules work uh, the second portion of this will cover a lot more uh, get more into the different needy, topics. greedy yeah, yeah different topics um, I know I, I know just just as a little sp I guess call it a little teaser I know when me and Vic have talked to Harach in previous times he's told us a lot of Im unbelievable stories yeah unbelievable i mean stories. like i said we we can go on for hours yeah. i mean this man yeah. is just amazing yeah. so um i do want to mention that our next live show will be january 13th uh in the new year 2022 and that will be season two so we're gonna end the year with season one uh, and uh, our uh, again, the live will be with Dr. Joseph Sarkisian, who Hrach introduced us, who is a historical coin collector. He's he's a historian as well. Yeah. We'll be discussing uh, you know metallurgy and and our, in the Armenian history, right? As far as the different types of coins well, and the so way, Yeah, the way yeah. the uh, carpets tell Armenian history, the coins. coins. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the numismatics tell yeah. a lot mm -hmm. yeah. and and thank and you joseph is, yeah. is yeah and thank well. you thank for you, introducing thank us you for making that yeah, yeah yeah um yeah i consult with him too you yeah. know in Good. many aspects yeah uh another thing we both mike and i are talking about possibly end of the month uh doing uh like just a live show with our fans sort of like a q and a uh, and just having a fun night. Please don't uh, well, leave. Please don't leave us alone. <laughs> <laughs> we we want to make it a show where we want our fans to join us live. So if if you wanna if you wanna be part of the show, send us an email. Again, that's pod p o d at medhedosna yeah. and uh, we'll actually share a link where you can join us live through the video as you see over here you can join us Just through your computer yeah have a conversation again with all our fans who uh constantly email us and send us messages we'd love to free jane it's gonna, it's gonna be a fun show and it, almost like a get to know us type of a show sure. so we're, we're, we're we'll announce that we're working on that it's definitely going to be end of the year which is probably a couple of weeks um let's see what else uh and and like i said we'll we'll announce the next shows with Harach in and uh, this is this is part one dot 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 yeah dot. part two and then we'll have part three mm -hmm. coming up um again uh to support us please go to medhelsna.com and support us with ordering the uh vartan digran and ashran sculptures vartan sculptures are shipping um We're if you want to support the podcast you can also go to Patre uh, patreon dot com slash medhelsnet I'm just throwing all the plugs. Yeah. But beside all that stuff, doesn't matter. Follow us on Instagram at MedHedosNed, um, Facebook, YouTube. If you're watching us on YouTube, um, hit that sus uh, subscriber button, that r little bell when we go live. We don't do lives all the time. So when we do, you'll get notified. Um, and uh, what else? And, uh, and again, if anyone, it has to be mentioned again, if anyone wants to help this amazing organization, the Armenian Rug Society, please, please either reach out to us or reach out yeah, to Haraj. Don't Haraj, how can they don't find you on... Hesitate. Uh, do not hesitate. How do please. they find you on Facebook? My last name. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, I'm the only one in this world with that last name. K-O-Z-I-B-E-Y. Yeah. And apparently I tripped on it in the beginning of the show. Well, yeah. yeah. You know what? You know what? Go to Google, uh -huh. type Armenian uh -huh. rugs. Yeah, his name comes up. He's right. My I've, name done, comes I've, up. I've done it too. He's Haraj right. Kozi Beokian. That is the last name. Search for him on. Uh, no, I stumbled on it for some reason Armenian in the beginning. Rugs. I don't know what that was about. Yeah. But uh, uh, I apologize, by the way. It's okay. It's the first time I stumbled on the last name. But. Uh, yeah, search for uh, search for uh, Harach and and reach out to him if you want to help him with the Armenian Rug Association. Yeah. It, it's uh, it's important for the culture, guys. It really is. Yeah. Um, anything else you want to mention before we? Uh, yeah, well, here is uh, one thing that concern I have. If we don't do anything about this culture, this part of the culture, which almost getting extinct for the past hundred years. Mm -hmm. In Eastern Armenia, due to the Soviet communism, 
in Western Armenia due to the massacres, mm -hmm. and it's gone. If we don't do anything to solve this, the neighboring enemies are vigilantly waiting to claim this art form as their own. Okay? We're not going to allow that. No. They take this from you. They take your identity. They take who you are. A people without a culture is not a nation. Yeah, you're empty. You're empty. Protect your culture in any aspect, not only rugs. Your culture is who you are. You're, you're defined by your culture. Protect it. Yeah. That's all. Great words. Thank you, everybody. As we always say, um, you know, thank you for joining us. Uh, respect one another, love one another. Until the next episode, take care of yourselves. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>